I just want to go full savage on these. I don't really want to talk. Sorry.
for.
hours. You gotta have your celery and ranch.
first came just to see what they were like texturally and they were trash so
like a flat better.
here and uh, let's just sauce them up and get to eating them. So I brought three bottles of my sauce and I'm just gonna do a little Jackson Pollock, if you will. This is barbecue sauce. We have the watery ranch or runny ranch, if you will. And lastly, some hot sauce. So it's like a honey, or not a honey, a barbecue hot ranch. Now that that is situated, we must pour. Today we're switching it up. We have peach fresca soda water.
guys. So if you don't know about the show yet, and you're into stuff like that, definitely watch it.
What is good, hoodlums? You guys really thought I forgot about the ASMR content, didn't you? So I've got the homemade wings here. Just did a medium sauce on them. And I'm going to get right into it. sauces you have. Maybe throw some buffalo like I did, or you can use like Tabasco or anything hot. Or throw in some ketchup. And you're uh, set to go. Let's give this guy a ranch dip and see what's up.
cast. Celebrity cast is like essentially dying or, you know, high off hot sauce. And then he throws them like curveball questions and
the sound quality was way different is because in the making of yesterday's video during the filming, I bailed my phone, which I used to shoot everything, iPhone 6, into a soapy, soaking bottle of hot water. survive.
toss them in a little bit of uh, oil and salt before I put them in.
face is being made in this video.
some really, like, this meal is legit, uh, in terms of, like, I can have it, and it's not bad, too bad for me, uh, it's just, I have no extra oil on this, these are baked in the oven, with just a little bit of, uh, lemon pepper, no salt, no nothing, and then just some straight up, like, hot sauce, and
is my one meal, true meal for today. Sometimes I have like a piece of fruit or something like that if I'm hungry later, but for the most part it's my one meal.
taking off the bite until the bite happened, you know? And then of course, it's a mastication massacre.
shit so bad again.
was actually like the best one. Oh my god. Hopefully I'm not too saucy of a mess, mess right now, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Till the next one. Eat good, live well, stay true.
and then like run up to people and like open up the jacket and have like the boxers with the big like boner hanging out.
got catfished by a fake wing stop. I went on Skip the Dishes, and it's been known to me that wing stop doesn't exist. I think in Canada, really at all. And on Skip the Dishes, there was a wing stop. So I was like, yo, I gotta cop some fucking wing stop, right? Like, that's the thing that needs to happen. So I order wing stop. And it shows up in this, like, there's no branding, no. The package is completely like some standard ass restaurant, like tin foil thing. And then it said, when you order the wings, you get a pound with like a celery ranch uh, and, and thick cut wedge fries. So I paid $26 in total for a pound, which I thought I was gonna get veggies, dip, fries, and then delivery and tip and whatever, but still. And what showed up was this, this stupid, just little tin with th this many wings. How many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine wings. And that's it. Nothing else. So, I just got catfished by, I guess, like a fake wing stop. Anyways, let me stop there and just eat these wings. I got Louisiana hot and we're doing a throwback, like gross, but people love this type of video for some reason. Super up close, so let's just do it. <laughs> I can't believe I got catfish by wings top. Anyways, they do look pretty good though, I can't lie, like they're not, they don't seem that bad. Looks like a good wing. Alright, let's figure it out. Like that, uh, like 
officially wherever these are from. They're very good. Like really good wiggles. I'm impressed.
legitimately actually sad that that's over. I wish I had another pound. Wow, that was, that was phenomenal. Till the next one, eat good, live well, stay true. Peace.
I started it a bunch of time ago. 
That's why this one will be on this channel. Now, some of you like chatty wings.
a little marrow to get all that goodness. Let's go for it. It ain't gonna hurt you.
restaurant. Like true Asian style at the restaurant mukbang.
like I love it. Let's go. 
be so saucy and so buttery.
making so much more.
just gonna hit it with some fresh lemon right quick. And then we'll go to town. Um, I also did them in cornstarch, so that's why they have that like thin, crispy layer. Let's get to work on these. Savage mode. You guys gotta check this out. Shot cup for the, the ranch. But in, in all honesty, it is the most perfect dipping vessel. Look at it.
I saw this come together. That's a lot of butter. As you guys can see, I'm back in my normal crib right now. It is, however, for a limited time only. some foods uh, when I'm at home.
I think he had other people that were, uh, you know, in the top tier of society in terms of the elite doing shit with him too. And he had dirt on them so he could pull strings and felt kind of invincible. Hey yo, what up world? What's good with y'all? Back with another one today. Keeping it light, keeping it tight, keeping it right, keeping it bright. These O-rings, these lights, not the funnest for the eyes, but necessary for the food. Speaking of which, Greek salad. A favorite on the channel over here is some Wangs. I haven't seen them yet. I just got them from a local spot called Golden Bakery. And together we're going to see the treasure unfold. Okay. Oh, steam. So I've never had wings from here. This will be a first. I got mild. They look more of a uh, not crispy, just like a more kind of baked dish and seasoned very well. They smell delicious. Could tell you that for free. <laughs> and we also have a Greek salad. There you go. Feta, olives, and all that good stuff. All right, y'all. I got the wings situated. I got the salad ready here. That was a whole catastrophe fiasco. This is a Greek salad, so we have Greek dressing. It is a oil-based one, no, not a creamy, which is a mild bummer. Uh, what isn't, though, a mild bummer is how much they provided. This is a good amount of dressing for this salad. I hate when they skimp on the dressing. So we got that done, and then before we do anything more, we must pour, but we're keeping it a little healthier today. I got my pitcher of water. Some ice. I was just feeling like I needed something lighter, healthier, more fresh. You know what I mean? We have to start with a wing, I think. You know, as much as uh, salads are delicious to me, I think uh, let's not waste any time and see what this is about. I'm going to try it straight up because I want to know what that, their mild sauce tastes like. Man. That is a delicious wing. So different. From the style that I make for myself. But man, that mild sauce is popping. And the way they've uh, seasoned this with the herbs. And it's like, it's like a roast style wing. Mm-hmm. Not crunchy, the cartilage is. Like the skin's not crunchy, but it's so flavorful and cooked right that I don't miss it. Mm. These are great. from a local spot, like I said, Golden Bakery. I've had the pizza a few times on the channel. Very like homegrown style pizza. Mom and pop shop, that's their whole food vibe anyways. They do like meatball subs and things like that. Italian classics, basically. Your guy craves a good salad. Greek 
being one of my favorite. And their dressing right now, absolutely killer. I do prefer a creamy Greek, but I can still mess with a uh, oil and vinegar. Oh man. The way that the onions and the olives and the tomato and the feta work together as friends. It's a beautiful thing. Very beautiful thing. Should we do a Quantran? Get in my mouth. <laughs> Get right in there. ASMR ranch. Man, this seasoning and this mild sauce is unreal. I can't believe how good it is. We'll definitely get it again. I gotta try their meatball sub. I've been looking at it. Definitely next on the hit list for sure. So, speaking of hit list, did Jeffrey Epstein kill himself or was he hit? <laughs> So here's the thing with the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing. I'm sure most of you probably know about it, who he is, what I'm talking about, have learned about it. To some degree, the thing is with me is I'm just getting privy to the shit. And uh, <clears throat> I am like floored by it all. It's very interesting. And appalling and crazy. But uh, I've heard the name... Weinstein and Epstein and shit being tossed around this whole meme about this guy Epstein killing himself or not I never really knew what any of this was about Cuz Yes, I kind of do live under a rock I personally uh, curate my world to only allow like brain food kind of thing. So <clears throat> I don't have traditional cable TV. I never would again because it's just 
poison. Especially the news, the news sources are just poison. And a lot of times, just drivel and lies and nonsense. You know, provided to you by different political party agendas. Which I don't really pay attention to much of that. Because I'm under the belief that you should curate your world per day with what you want in it. So good energy, good information. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts, watch documentaries, and I listen to like Alan Watts philosophy stuff. I listen to Terrence McKenna. Podcast with interesting people. Uh, or I spend time learning about how to get better at business stuff via the internet and also how to use my technology better, how to how to edit better, how to microphones, cameras, all that stuff. Get better at music production. So I don't spend a lot of time in regular media, so I didn't really know of this Jeff Epstein story or really who he was. So I pop on Netflix recently just to see if there's any decent documentaries because it's a, it's a decent source for, docu for documentaries. And on there was uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich. If you like documentaries and you have not watched it, go watch it. It's a good watch. It's crazy. And basically, it's just this dude who seemingly just manipulated and weaseled and lied his way. I mean, he was smart too, obviously, but his way into like great success and being a billionaire and a socialite, hanging out with presidents, athletes, famous people, actors. And he ultimately was running like this pedophile sex sex trafficking type st style ring mainly for his own self interest but I think he had other people that were uh, you know in the top tier of society in terms of the elite doing shit with him too and he had dirt on them so he could pull strings and felt kind of invincible in that world. Anyways, to me, it was just a very good, like, interesting watch. Um, obviously, a bit of a weird watch. going to make you feel some type of way. For the victims and everything, but... Beyond the victims and that, it made me more think about... those crazy upper class elites and like all that seedy 
evil kind of satanic like ritualistic type shit that they do behind closed doors like when you have that much money right you like can get away with so much crazy shit you can buy your way out of jail you can buy people off to not get, go against you in court just a wild, lot of wild stuff but it's mainly interesting in that regard to me because like I said a lot of I will watch a lot of like rabbit hole off the beaten path type shit and uh, excuse the water running that is the the washing machine but I've watched tons of documentaries on YouTube about um, the cabal satanic rituals and influence in like the elite and in Hollywood um, Freemasonry you know Aleister Crowley shit and uh, you can watch all that stuff and be persuaded it's fun to believe in and I'm sure a lot of it's probably pretty true. But like, watching this Epstein documentary and just seeing the people that he was involved with, Bill Clinton and stuff like that. He used to hang out with uh, Trump a lot. And to see him being one of these people that those documentaries basically try to expose the ones about pedophilia and in the elite in Hollywood and shit like that. Sex trafficking. To like actually see a documentary that basically just shows proof that that was happening. was just like very captivating to me because I've always looked into all that stuff and like learned about it and gone down these rabbit holes but never with any like real definitive evidence that there pretty much shows and is convincing once again sorry for this insane washer that finally just shut up but hey life these things happen those were delicious I want to just keep licking the sauce it's so good if you haven't watched a documentary and you're not too easily shaken up and offended and going to go off the deep end give it a watch because it's like it's just a very like captivating watch you know it just it keeps you intrigued i watched the whole thing in one go it was four episodes i think they're like an hour each i just watched it in one go so if you're into that vibe check it out if not don't check it out and uh till the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true Thank you.
black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Well, 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 what up world? Back with another one that I'm turbo excited about. Y'all know I love anything chicken fried buffalo with a bone that I can clean it right off. That didn't sound great, but you know what I mean. You might think it's almost pretty much game day around here. Look at this bad boy. Let's let you hit it from the back one time. That's, that's really where it's coming from. Right up in the face there. Let's move the old Rancho Relaxo. So we got the buffalo fried chicken. And then the top boys, we got some, hello, maneuvers. We also got some uh, mozzarella cheese melted on the top. In the words of Ben Dean, as of right now, they're looking mighty fine. So I'm excited, but first we must, of course, we gotta pour up. Front and center, we're back with the Dr. P diet. Moment of silence. The fountain of youth. Tame your ass down there, Mr. Bubs. Come on now. It's the one thing about the diet sodas. Something about the aspartame keeps it so they aren't as tame in the bubble up. They get naughty in the bubble up. They take much more time. Ooh, above the rim. White boys can't jump though, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's the one right there. That's a reserve bottle from down uh, in, the, in the, the humidor, but that's not, it's the wine cellar, but also cigars would go with it, so you know what I mean? It's the one. Okay, I, I'm gonna tell you a story too about you know when i was younger with my best boy and just some funny shit kind of that we got up to but anything buffalo chicken always reminds me of this story because that's where my love affair with buffalo chicken began let's get this cheesy boy with the extra sauce steaming piping front and center tell me you're not here for it You go nowhere, cheese. You go nowhere. Mozzarella cheese was killing it there. Oh, oh hot. Mmm, that's so good. this recipe I just tried for this is actually that of Quan Trans and uh, but it was I attempted it in the air fryer instead of oil and I'll say I think it came out pretty damn good of course we need to have a bite of ranch otherwise it wouldn't be my channel mm -mm -mm. I gotta say especially for It not getting done in oil. Kwan's uh, recipe came out crisp. Nice crunch.
I'm in like a heaven state right now. This is so, so good. Extra saucy, just how I like it. And extra saucy, just how I like it. These are halal drumsticks as well, which means they are blessed. Let me tell you, these are blessed. I always find chicken that's been butchered halal style to be more like it's like cleaner inside or something. I try to always buy halal chicken. It just seems nicer almost every time I've done it. It's nicer. Okay, so a story about my love affair and where it began with buffalo chicken. My family was very non-adventurous when it came to eating, especially in the lane of hot sauces. My family didn't really do spicy. We're white as fuck. From Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Do you think we're seasoning our meats? No. You think we're having like a little Caribbean flavor on there? I think we're really challenging our palates? No, we eat Miracle Whip by the spoonful, okay? So, anyways, I came from a super basic family like that. Met my best friend, one of my best friends, in grade nine. So I grew up skiing and snowboarding, and uh, he snowboarded too, so we're in grade nine. We're getting to be best boys. We start smoking weed together. So, we would have these weekend rituals where at school we'd have like our 20 bucks, like I would get allowance. His parents were pretty stacked, so he could always just have money we'd pool our funds we'd find the guy at school that was selling the nugs we had our mainstay dude that always sucked in high school when it's like the dude who you expect you can get on before the weekend hits and he's out and you're like fuck like you're like you gotta find your alternate source but our one dude is pretty reliable So we grab our bag and we had a, like a ritual of, cause he lived out by a ski hill. I'd sleep out there for like the weekend. And we go snowboarding and like stealthily get high and just like, you know, have sleepovers and just watch a dumb shit. Be baked as shit. 
and really honestly just be having the best time like the funniest laughs with your best boy just so coned out of your face amazing i miss those times so much <clears throat> matzah so we get we take his bus to his house get off his parents would still be at work usually but his parents were pretty like clueless and like let him do kind of what he wanted to do they weren't like too involved And he lived in like a rich kid house out in like a wealthy neighborhood but sort of in the sticks sort of like almost country but wealthy country basically like golf course kid you know And so we wouldn't go snowboarding until Saturday and then also Sunday as well. But on the Friday, we'd always like get to his crib, roll up our little joints, and he had this little bubbler that we named George. So we'd have like our kit with our joints. We'd grab George the bubbler. Yes, I'm lit up. It's buffalo wings. Don't judge. And uh, about... I don't know, a couple kilometers down from his, uh, his house, there was a hotel with a restaurant in it. And he was like, yo, he's like, I gotta bring you down. He's like, after we, like the first time I got introduced, we were going through, he would bring me into this trail, or he showed me the first time, he brought me into this trail. This is what became religious as our friendship went on. But the first time, go on the trail, walking through the trail, we like pack up, get cone and whatever, we're all, we're all stoned out of our tree. <clears throat> and uh, we would head down to the restaurant. And at this time it'd be like, 5 p.m., maybe 5.30. Not, yeah, five, about 5 p.m. And we roll into the restaurant. Just cooked. Reeking of bud. But ready to get our grub on. You know that feeling when you're super big? And you're in public and you think you're like stealth or trying to be stealth but you're not and you also like because you're so self-conscious because you're baked you basically like can't look people straight in the eye with confidence you're kind of like they know what's up especially when you're i don't know, I think we were 15 14 15 like so young so we walk into this restaurant and there's fucking nobody in there basically we have the place to ourselves so it's like all attention on us from the server and the bartender and we like sit at this back table it's reeking like bud and he he used to do this thing when he was high to try to like i don't know if he thought he was being smooth or what but he used to like rub his hands together and like look try to be like slick with the server and he was like he was like because they didn't normally offer the chicken fingers tossed in sauce it was just chicken fingers and fries but he knew the hack of because he knew, like lived around there and he'd been there he knew the hack of frank's buffalo and i had no clue so he'd always be like can i get the uh chicken fingers and fries but tossed in frank's <laughs> and the server would be like okay so like in and he's like yeah tossed in frank's just like so burnout and then one day 
he he was so like awkward in his head about being high. He's like he's doing the hands for me. He's like, oh, and can I also get a Pepsi? And he like did this thing where he like stretched his face because we were so, so high, and I just burst out dying laughing. So the server's like, clearly these two are just like baked ass idiots. And ever since that day forward, like it's such an inside joke. I always hit him with like the the uh, like the pet like the Pepsi stretchy face. So anyway, it was the first time the chicken fingers come. I've never had them. I've never had Frank's. I've never had a buffalo anything. In my head, at that time a buffalo was a buffalo, like a big animal, not a sauce. Well, not a hot sauce that originated in a place in America, you know? So I'm lit. And you guys know how good food tastes when you're lit. Got the munchies, right? I bit into those chicken fingers. My life changed instantly. My taste buds were transported to another realm. And from then on, I've been hooked on buffalo chicken tenders. Now, because I was so juvenile and amateur in this buffalo chicken world and yes i'm going to clear this whole board of chicken don't worry about it it's easy <clears throat> it took me some years to work up to wings and then i found wings and wings took it to a whole nother level the crisp the meat just actually being close to the bone And then from there, I low-key used to not really clear the bone. I used to leave bits and pieces and shit on the end. And then I slowly but surely learned about clearing your bone. And that's how I came to be the chicken savage that you know and love before you. So here I am for your viewing pleasure being a savage. Because I've learned that when it comes to buffalo chicken, fried chicken, wings, it's the only way to be. Respect the death of the animal. And use it for what it's worth. Know what I mean? Also, Get baked with your boy and go for a plate. Truly one of life. Simple pleasures. And to that story, we slam a cheers and a final countdown. Wet under my eyes and probably a very red face, I say to you that meal could have been no better. That was awesome. <laughs> I am extremely satisfied with what just happened here. Okay, to the next one. You know what to do. Be good, live well. Stay true.
black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. Eat good, live well, stay true. What's going on, you guys? Back with another one here for you today. Uh, wings, of course. Not in the ASMR style. We're just going to mukbang it and freestyle a video because that's how I'm feeling today. I'm feeling very off the cuff, uh, very like flowy energy. It's just like. You know, I, I just one of these days. I don't want to talk about something pre planned. So here I am. I got like, I don't know, maybe two pounds of wings, maybe two and a half, roughly. I'm not sure, but probably about two and a half. Homemade, of course, as per usual. Um, and I have a little bit of an announcement about that later, probably in this video. But uh, not looking like my best batch in history ever, I'm going to say, but still probably pretty delicious. So. Let's get into them. Actually, before that, first things first, I have to say RIP to a young legend, young god, uh, Mac Miller, so my doppelganger. I cannot believe that he's dead. Uh, he died yesterday, over overdosed on something. I don't know what yet. I haven't read into it yet today, but just RIP Mac Miller, like blowing my mind. Can't believe he's gone. Uh, just like, it's ridiculous to me. I just, I can't, I just can't fathom it really, just because. I just became such a fan of him, you know, like in the last five years, I'd say like, or yeah, four or five years. Like, I don't know. Anyways, let's eat and then I'll just, we'll talk. Okay. See that? That's how you want it. One foul swoop. Okay. Full Savage. Randy Savage. Actually, really good. Quite delicious. Mm, okay, so just back to Mac Miller for a second. Can't believe he's gone. If you've never listened to his mixtape, it might as well be an album called Faces. I really appreciated that tape a lot. It meant a lot to me, and it really helped me through like some rough times. And that's the power of music and good music. And Mac was ex exceptional at making music. He's he's legit, legit a genius. Because not only was he rapper, singer, all that, songwriter, like, he was, he makes his own beats, like, but crazy, like, he's sampling, like, old records and shit, like, I've watched a lot of shit on Mac Miller on the internet, him at home cooking up, and it's really incredible to watch, his process and everything, he had a very soulful, sound like he liked a lot of soulful music so and his live performances are nuts like so good on stage so much energy just giving it all vocally not like lip syncing phoning in his verses you know what I mean he really went for the whole thing it was so And he was only going to get better and better. Every, you know, his last album he just released. Amazing. Super cool. And you know, that's so sad. It's like he's about to go tour this new album that's doing, you know, it's a good album and everything. And then he dies.
and I'm so curious to know kind of more about it because you know he's always been battling addictions issues like he he likes you know alcohol and drugs and uh, I can relate to that to some degree but um I'm I'm I I want to know whether or not he OD'd in the sense of like purposely like he wanted out of here Or if he just like accidentally just did too many strong drugs or like a bad mix or something like that. So But that's the culture nowadays, like Perpetuate, perpetuating pills and lean and shit's no joke though man like you gotta be careful or you'll take yourself out by accident but I understand wanting to have some fun like I get that for some people that's you know that's her thing It's gotta be smart about it. I don't take Mac for the guy. Like, his musically definitely indicated that he had some, you know, definite internal struggles and inner turmoil and definitely some, like, kind of negative views on life and living and stuff, but I don't know. I don't think he'd kill himself. But I guess... No. Oh, sorry, I have the dryer on. Okay, we get it. I guess that's what everybody says about anybody. Well, not anybody, but when somebody dies, like, and you don't know, like, it seems like it could be suicide. And then everybody's like, oh, well, they didn't seem like the type or whatever. It's like, most people don't seem like the type. And then it happens, it's like, That's the internal battle. Like, like that's the thing about suicide and depression and shit like that. It's like, of course, nobody thought that because these are things that you can't share with people. Like for the most part, like most people don't want to think it's weird to like taboo. To say how they're feeling about life, like. Which I think is a problem because life is fucking weird. Though enjoyable a lot of the time, it can get really hard and dark and very rough and very like lonely or like, I guess the best word for me would be hopeless. Like I know what it's like to feel hopeless. spent most of my 20s feeling hopeless and I just think that's like a dialogue that needs to be more considered as something not taboo because everybody has their hard days or months or years and like 
I think it's okay to, to say out loud to somebody. I'm feeling like I don't want to be here anymore. Like I'm feeling like this sucks. Like I'm feeling like what's the point or what's... You know, how's, how's this going to work out good for me? Because life's weirdly conflicting like that. You want to do all these great things and... This, that, and the other, and dreams and shit and whatever, but... you die in the end anyways. Like the biggest joke of it is that you die in the end anyways. Like spend your whole life doing these things. Working for something, looking for fulfillment or whatever. And then you die in the end anyways. So it's like, what's the difference if I do it now or in 60 years? Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't think it should be that taboo to just tell a friend or whatever, family member, whoever, like, I've been feeling like, like this is all pointless and I don't want to be here anymore. Like, I think that's okay to, to say. And I don't think you should be scrutinized for feeling an emotion, for feeling a way. Because bullshit. And I felt really shitty too in my life before. And there's still times I still do. And there will be times in the future. Only now, as of recently, am I actually seeing the hope for myself in my life. And... The craziest part about it is because of this, because of YouTube, because of you guys, because of my viewers, because of everything that's happened to me from this channel. And it's all starting to kind of slowly but surely unravel and, and roll out and happen for me. Like the universe has been blessing me <laughs> time and time again. And right now there's things in the works in my life behind the scenes that are all due to, the, to this, to me doing this, to me putting myself on the internet being who I am, being authentic to my real genuine self, uh, doing something that's fun to me that I love, giving out to you guys, giving out entertainment, you know, relax, relaxation or, or laugh or whatever. But I'm giving out energy to the world and it's reciprocating now, finally. Took time and patience, but... And it's only going to get better and better and better as long as I just keep doing what I... What I, what I find to be my truth and what I find to be entertaining to me. And if that's... I think this... this I know the food is a draw, but... This channel goes beyond food for me and for other people, I think, too. It's like, it allows me to share me, my story, my personality, my life, my character, my, you know, like, I think there's something to that. So opportunities have been rolling in and I'm finally feeling like hopeful for my life. I've been, you know, I've been reached out to by an agency that does brand deals. So it's like now I can get more, I can get, well, I have been paid to, to do videos now. Like that's crazy. So that's like income from that. Income from YouTube. 
Just the view. Excuse me. I have people hitting me up for brand deals to send me stuff for free. Like I got an email the other day and it's on the way. But a like kitchen supply store wants to send me an air fryer and use it and kind of do a review on it. And I'm stoked. I can't wait to do wings in the air fryer. I want to try it so bad. And I'm going to do that video. And I'll be straight up with you guys. It's not even like a sponsored video. It's just me trying out somebody's product that I actually want to try and use. Because I cook. And I, I'm excited to try it. So there's going to be a video on that. And, uh, like it's a $150 air fryer. Like, I don't know. I'm cool with that. It saves me money. I'm down for free, free expensive shit. Like why not? And the biggest opportunity yet that I've had through YouTube is <clears throat> currently in the works and happening right now, but, and if you've made it this far in the video, you're, you're a true ride or die. And that's who I want to hear this information rather than a hater. Cause I need, I need the positive vibes, but, um, I've been in talks with a label because a viewer who worked at a label heard my music and was like, yo, this is good. Like we need to show this to the head guy that does the signing and shit for artists. And I've sent in my, I just sent in my demos and everything and my kit and like the dude that's doing the hiring, like the signing, if you listen to the song, he said, it's, let's just say it's all positive so far. There's just um, one little kink that I fixed and I sent it back off and kind of waiting around. There's gonna, it's the weekend, so a few days and whatever down this week, we'll see what happens and kind of where things go. And But I believe in the power lately of like, I feel like I've tapped into something, but the power of just like applying constant pressure the things that you believe in and the universe will reciprocate and get you back. As long as you just keep pushing your truth. And so I really want, I believe about like speaking things into existence now too. The more you say it, the more you affirm it, the more the reaction is probably going to be positive. So I believe that the things are going to go well with this labeled thing. And I want anybody out there watching who is down with me, riding with me and genuinely has my best interest at heart to please, I, I please put out the, uh, the positive vibes into the universe, up that universal frequency for me. I need it right now. It'll be helpful. But I do believe deeply that I'm set up for some success right now. With the product I've turned in and put on the table, it's, I think it's really solid. And I hope for you guys to hear all my music in the near future, just properly, you know what I mean? With some video behind it or just in a, in a, in a more professional manner, I guess. 
is what I should say. So if you made it to the last wing, you're a G. I love you. I respect you. Thank you so much for watching. Riding with me being loyal. I truly appreciate it and it's truly kind of mind-blowing and inspiring. Every once in a while I just step back and reevaluate re how much it means to me that you guys engage and subscribe and are here with me. So I really do appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for everything. Honestly, without without you guys subscribing and watching and doing all that, none of this would be possible for me. None of this would happen. I know I had to do all the work to, to, to start it and shit, but like without you guys, I don't exist as well. So it's like, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's crazy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that one. Till the next one. Eat good, live well, stay true. All right, y'all. Yo, what up? Been a minute since uh, I've done this. Welcome to a little crispy wings mukbang. I don't have anything to pour today. I do just have a glass of water. Unfortunately, any uh, soda options in my house were all out. Uh, beyond that, coldest water, shout out. If you'd like to get a bottle, save 10%. Do so down below in the links. Use code hoodie. And uh, beyond that, I'm excited to get into these wings. They just came out of the pan fryer. I did them in canola oil, straight up, just naked. And uh, I gotta say, looking really quite great. A couple things to note. Up front in the uh, the dipping center, we have honey garlic, peri peri, like le or sorry, lime, herbed, like semi spicy, and then ranch. And uh, yeah, I'm just ready to eat. These are super hot and fresh and uh, we'll have a chat. But the first thing I wanna do is go honey garlic. It's a store-bought honey garlic. It's a little thin. I added a little bit of a cornstarch slurry, but I should have done probably a bit more. It's still pretty thin, like it drips. I feel like honey garlic shouldn't really drip. It should totally stick. But uh, give you one up close of that. A little honey garlic coat, and in we go. I don't know if you can see that steam coming coming off. But they are fresh. So incredibly crunchy. Just salted them after. And we're gonna do it on a dip by dip basis. Something crazy in the world is happening. Two things, well, a lot of things, but relative to, to food and diet pop, actually. This whole little platter here, this is two pounds, by the way, of wings, uh, is all the drum part of it, because all my grocery stores here don't have any flats, and I don't understand what the deal is. There's a, just a sh shortage of flats. Mm. Man, that's good sauce. Nando's. You gotta try it. Um, so yeah, they only sell the drum part. Which I'm so confused about. Also, Diet Dr. Pepper. and diet and w root beer impossible to find obsolete since pandemic started they are 
non-existent ranch. So it's quite a shame, quite a bummer. Both my favorite diet pops and my favorite part of the win. Can't seem to get anywhere. Very annoying. Another annoying thing is my own bonehead error, but when I went shopping for these the other day, or yesterday, I should say, I, uh, I meant to get buttermilk because I wanted to do one pound naked like this, just na like natural. And then I wanted to do the other pound like breaded so I want to do a, like a half flour half cornstarch and like blend up almost like kind of crunchy cornflake buttermilk soak them and then dredge them in that and then fry them off to make like a, a crispy coated type fried chicken type style wing but I forgot the buttermilk. So we ended up here. But instead, what I will do in the coming days, I'll make those same, that same concept, but buttermilk fried chicken sandwiches. And I want to coat them in like a honey hot style sauce I'm going to make. So I'm down for that. But yeah, man, just taking a breather, had to take a breather in terms of YouTube. So many reasons why, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to even pinpoint one because there's probably about 50. But I will say one for sure, definitely as to why. And it's, uh, man, this stuff, so good. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple reason. And that is that my ice maker is annoying. That's one thing. But the uh, the other thing is that like you, the people who watch these videos, like you probably pull up with a plate and like enjoy a nice meal just having like me on in the background you know half paying attention but also just getting to like enjoy your meal and uh, <clears throat> for most of my life before ever doing this ever doing YouTube ever pulling up with eating videos I used to be the same person um, I'd get my, I'd make my meal at home or I'd get my, I'd order something and it would be like my, my like really enjoyable de-stress time. Like the, you know, just, I really enjoy that food and not think about too much, just kind of escape, put something on to listen to and just vibe out. And that was one of my one of my favorite things in life, to be honest. I think it's a lot of ours. And uh, 
I've just dedicated, sacrificed really a lot of those moments in my life for this channel, to eat for this channel. And uh, when I'm running the channel at top tilt, I basically only eat for the channel pretty much just because it's so hard to maintain a healthy weight and everything if I'm eating like dirt for the, this channel and then like eating a bunch more per the day like it just doesn't make sense but so I was sacrificing those really enjoyable style meals in order to do this and uh I just want to know what that was like again. I wanted to know what it was like to be able to make a meal, order a meal, not stress about setting anything up, not stress about the angle of the camera, not stress about what I'm going to say, talk about, not stress about anything. And and get to put on my show, movie, whatever, YouTube, and just let it all be and just actually enjoy every bite of the food because this is what a lot of people like who do this won't tell you, but <clears throat> during the creation of content of a mukbang, uh, no matter what, even if you don't talk, you're still robbed of a certain level of, of pleasure because you don't, there's always something else going on in your mind relative to the lighting. Did, did my sound fuck up? Is my angle wrong? Oh shit, I'm going to have to edit that out. So you can't completely enjoy every bite quite the same as you would if you were off camera zoning out. So, I needed to experience that again for a little while, which I did. Uh, and let me tell you, it was great. I love that shit. I got to order things. You know, the dirty things. that I would normally be like, oh, this has to be a video. But instead this time, I got to just fully indulge. And not have to scroll through comments about you shouldn't be eating that. Yeah, man, 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 man. Yeah, yeah. Keep talking. But yeah, that was one of the more simple reasons as to why I just needed a break. Um, many other deeper reasons as to why I also needed a break. Won't really get into them. It's probably too much for this video. But, uh, I don't know, man. On some other basic shit, I just needed to like recharge. I just needed some freedom.
freedom from expectation and standards to uphold and shit like that. Also, just enjoy summer. Very short ram. Get out to the lake. Just go like be in the sun and just simple life enjoyment. More or less. Mm. Just want to shout out everyone who showed uh, love on my recent song that I released there that with that video, Time Ticks. If you haven't watched it, please go check it out, leave a comment. Also go watch the video I just dropped about my top 10 movie food reactions. I thought it was hilarious, personally myself, or highly entertaining at least. Seems like one of those videos that could have like, just by the thumbnail and the title, like a, like a, a viral potentiality, but Seeing as I'm pretty sure I've been basically shadow banned, I feel like, by YouTube. Because in the past, my videos have not really aligned with YouTube law. I think somewhere along the way they were like, fuck this guy. Let's just keep him hidden. But it'd be sick to hit the algorithm again sometime soon. But who knows? Whatever. Uh, I also just feel like I've been having like. I told you guys back in the day that when I was in my early 20s, I had like a panic attack and then all this anxiety. That basically forced like a spiritual awakening on me. I feel like I'm having another one of those. Minus the anxiety though. It's not like it's, it hasn't it's not an anxiety induced like breakthrough in in like awareness. This time it just seems more like intellectually focused and wisdom based. questioning like deeply questioning a lot of things just about me my values my morals what's next for me what what do i really want here like out of life what's what's actually important And then questioning a lot of shit about like reality. The nature of reality. And then also the
sort of the state of the world right now and how intensely everything's seemingly there's a lot of conflict right now and a lot has happened in this year that has like been so vibrationally like abrasive and uh, I think it's just pushing a lot of people into a, into higher states of consciousness and uh It's pretty undeniable at this point. I think there's some sort of I don't know transcendence type shit that's like on the horizon for I don't know humanity or the world as a whole. I don't know. Something's happening though and it's that's like happening in within me as well. And uh, I also just needed to get off of here, off of this platform, which is very, very kind of toxic. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of bad energy on this, on this platform. A lot of really good information though. A lot of good energy too, but uh, yeah, I just needed time to step away and like process a lot of that and uh, introspect and. Um, Just kind of figure out like what my uh, modus operandus should be in life, really, just moving forward. Because the world as we knew it. Shit's dead, man. And things are gonna get a lot more wild before they ever return I just don't think they're ever going to return to like what it was. I just, I think we're really on just the, we're, 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 we're at the very beginning baby step path to a whole new a whole new way of life, I think. sure that that way of life is going to be for the better I don't know I will say this though I am extremely fortunate to be where I live in the world geographically speaking both as my citizenship, like being a Canadian. I, I've never been more happy or proud to be a Canadian in my life. This is like, I just really think our country has like, we stepped up to the plate pretty hard with all this relative to our own, our own civic duty in a sense to each other. And um, I just love the fact, like, I, I don't know, Canada is like a, just a really great country to be honest. And uh, I'm really glad that I don't 
just with everything that I think is about to occur in the world, like that I don't live in a, in a major city anymore, that I don't live in like a metropolis, that, I, that I'm near like uh, nature and shit in like a more widespread type scenario, just with way less people, way less intensity, more of a community type feel. And then of course, just, you know, just my, my, uh, my living situation that I'm in, which is, I'll have to elaborate on that maybe in a, in a video, but I just never wanted to flex it, but I bought a house. So there's that, but I'll talk about it in another video. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all good in that regard. Another reason why I took a break because I'm just like doing well in that area. Like I'm, I'm all good in a sense with, uh, with my, uh, living situation in terms of income and stuff. So yeah, I just finally had like a, the moment in time where it felt appropriate, like just to be like, I can afford to just, you know, regain some of my normality back here. Because as fun as the internet is to do, at times, it's also really strange. It's a strange place. But it's like, you know, it's part of our lives now, right? It's like, it's, it's, it's the world with inside the world. So, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just sometimes you got to pull the plug out of that matrix to come back to this matrix just to enjoy this one a little bit to just have your normal human self and then uh, come back refreshed I guess but uh, yeah anyways those were fucking awesome and uh, I don't know I'm just gonna wing it from here on out as, as I always do but uh, I got some plans I got, I got some ideas I got some other other vids that I want to come down the chamber um, yeah, I have some ideas. Just stay tuned. Till the next one. Eat good, live well. Stay true.
I'm sure there's some of you out there who have had that experience when you're just coming up on something and you're like, uh, and you're like clinging to something to save you. You just like, you need something to like center your mind and get in that Zen. And then once you're in that Zen, you're like, okay, f I, I got it. Like I got this, this is good. Like this, I can enjoy this now. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yo, what up? Back with another one today. Wing King doing his thing thing. It's a special one because if you look in the pile right here situated in front of us, you'll see that there's no drums. It's another all flats, baby. This one is not done like a breaded and fried. This is just a crispy oil uh, air fryer, 40 minutes, 400 degrees, naked crispy salt featuring four dips okay we'll get into those in a second but of course before we do anything more we must pour so we've got our perfect iceberg right here ready to roll and we've got a brand new fresh from the corner store diet dr p coming to save a life i feel like i'm so ready for one of these i honestly can't remember last time i had a little dr p action I'm sure it hasn't been very long knowing me in my life, but I feel like we haven't poured one up here in just a little bit. So very excited to get into this because it's really cold and fresh and beautiful and bubbly. And also should be another banger due to the fact that I got a story time today I'm going to tell you. And that is, I think it was like my third time ever doing mushrooms and just kind of how it all played out the, uh, just some funniness of it. I don't know that it's the most insane tale, but it at least should be somewhat entertaining. And some of you might have had some relatable experiences, uh, you know, dealing with psychedelics or drugs or being on the influence of something that alters the state of your mind. So, sip it. Mm. That's that extra fresh recipe today. Okay, so we get ready to dip it. And we have Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue. We have my stepmother's homemade yellow pepper jelly. Ranch, of course, but I got some carrots back here. That's more of a palate cleanser. And then I whipped up this like creamy honey Dijon. So kind of like a honey mustard, but like a creamy Dijon honey mustard. First place I want to go is to this yellow pepper jelly because I feel like it's going to be so good. A little spicy, predominantly sweet with some authentic pepper flavor in there. Just a thin a wing needs. Mm. These are perfect. As suspected. The pepper jelly. Super on point. Works perfectly. I just heat it up in the pan a little bit just to get it warm. Mm. Definitely a first on wings. I've never had a pepper jelly before on wings, but I tell you what, it works. Okay, next up, this Dijon honey mustard creamy. I'm intrigued to know, also a first time.
I just put Dijon, honey, mayo, a little bit of salt. And the tiniest squeeze of lemon juice. Kills it. <clears throat> I just want to try one of everything. Then get to the story. This is two packs from the store. I'm sure it's over two pounds. Probably two and a half. Sweet baby. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the raise is where it's at. I would say there's probably 30 flats here for sure. For 10 bucks. That's why you make wings at home, my friends. Because getting them <clears throat> at restaurants or pubs, just such a waste of money. We can make them just as good at home. If not better. For a third of the cost. Okay. Let's tell you a story about this mushrooms trip that I had. I think I was 16 or 17. And, uh... <clears throat> If you guys have been with me long enough, especially lately, now that I'm back uh, where I'm originally from, I've talked about how I had like a camp, summer home or whatever you want to call it, out on <clears throat> Lake Superior. And that I would spend my summers up there, two, three months at a time. Um, out there during those months, there was always other families with camps and, uh, you know, you would meet kids at swimming and sports and shit. And then you would just gather up. Like a crew, summer crew. So we had a pretty deep summer crew. And the kid that lived up the street or up the dirt road from me, his parents were balling. And they had it all. Huge place. Pool in a deck. Cabana. Like a bar. The uh, sauna, showers, just like a general hangout space. Pretty much designed for the kids. To enjoy their life in the summer. Parents were up top, like in the main house usually. So on this particular day, our crew 
like I said, about eight to 10 of us. We've all been smoking weed for a couple years at this point. And um, a few of us have done mushrooms and stuff. I, I, at this point, had done mushrooms like two times. And we all decide, some of us who haven't done mushrooms, some of us who had, and we all decide that night, like, yo, let's all pitch in and get a bag of mush and like trip out. But we're out like 45 minutes or an hour away from town. No dealers out where we are selling mushrooms. So we all started brainstorming about like, okay, who do we know who deals weed? Who might know somebody who deals mushrooms? We finally get connected to this guy. Week actually turns out we know him. He's like a senior at a few of our high schools. A few of us went to the same high school. And... <clears throat> He's like, yeah, I'll, I have an ounce. I can sell you but I gotta charge you to drive out. 50 bucks. We're like, sure, whatever. So we pool their money. Dude drives out. Hands us like the fullest, fattest Ziploc bag of mushrooms. Like, could have used it as a pillow. <laughs> so we're all just sitting there like, holy shit, that's actually way more than we thought. So, <clears throat> we got a few pizzas because there's a local store there. Like, restaurant and store. It sells pizza. So we went and got a few pizzas. And then sat down by the pool in the cabana, ate them with pizza, a couple grams each. I knew to keep it to like two, two and a half, just because of my previous experiences. And my previous experiences were always kind of, they ended up always being good, but in the beginning, when you're first coming up on the high, that's when it just gets a little dicey. It gets a little difficult to accept the high and let go. Especially think with things like psychedelics are gonna last for hours. So we do the mushroom. Um, it's getting dark. And down beside the pool, like lower, there's like this, this shale rock beach where the waves come in off the lake. And that's where his fire pit was set up. We got the fire pit loaded, sit on the benches. None of us are zooming yet. We still haven't fully come up. And uh, we get the fire lit. And you can tell that everybody's starting to come up. Everybody's starting to be different. Kind of going a little bit quiet. A little bit weird. And mine are coming on. And there's this thing, if you've ever done mushrooms or psychedelics, you can kind of just feel this like buzzing energy and like reality just start to like feel different. It just changes. I don't know how to explain it, but <clears throat> if you know, you know, there's just like this vibrational energy in your being, you start seeing things like differently.
So that's coming on. And I'm like, a bit of a control freak, obviously. Like when it's, I don't, I just, I, I was always that way with drugs. I always had a hard time letting myself go into the experience, right? So I was like not resisting. I was like not really resisting per se, but I just needed like a grace period to get into it. And my buddy, the guy that owned the place at the time, he had, or well, his parents, a mini disc player. It was like, Around the time of like MP3s, CD players, I think. I think many of these players were after CD players. It's like this little floppy disk cartridge that has a small CD in it. And you load it into the disc player and kind of shut like that. Um, so we had this mini disc player. I was like, yo man, I'm kind of tripping right now. I'm like, I just need something to like take my mind off this. Like, can I listen to your mini disc player? And he's like, sure man, here, here you go. And at this point, everybody else decided we're going swimming. And I was like, I can't act swimming right now. Like, I need to zen out and deal with my high before I trip right out. So they all decided to leave me and go swimming. I'm left alone sitting at this fire, like paranoid schizophrenic, like on the edge of a freak out, basically, just trying to like, you know, reel my shit in. And accept being high. And I'm scrolling through his uh, mini disc songs. He had just a mix of randomly downloaded stuff. And I stumbled upon <clears throat> this song, this beat starts playing, I've never heard before. I'll link the song down below. It's called Proceed With Caution by Benefit, this white rapper named Benefit who never made it as a rapper. But he had a few like internet, YouTube, big songs this and this one's called proceed with caution so this is back when i'm like into eminem and like really rapidly rap and this dude's just spitting the beat is so sick proceed with caution <laughs> so in this moment i'm locked in i'm like holy shit i'm saved like this this mu this one song just took over my high and like flipped the switch into it being like good. I was now enjoying my high. So I'm just sitting there watching these flames and I could like zoom into the flames with my eyes. I could like zoom in and out. And I shit you not, I played the song for two hours straight. Over, over, over. By the end of the session, I'm me tripping balls trying to save myself with this song. And like, gazing into the fire, I knew every lyric. Bar for bar. <laughs> Meanwhile, where I'm seated, I can see up to like the pool and the cabana. And we used to do this thing where we would climb the side of the cabana and just we would like run and jump into the pool, pool and cannonball. So it's kind of dark, but we got the fire and stuff. And the boys were out there busting off flips and shit into the pool. But like I didn't see them as humans. <laughs> I couldn't like make out their shape. So I'm just like tripping to the song, the flames. I see like these energy balls going into like water and then the water splash. And was like, 
like really colorful and soft and like it just I don't know I was just I was like mesmerized so I finally was in a good enough place to go up and join the people who were like already all good and let themselves just be high at which point we got this idea to play like Predator. So kind of like hide and go seek, but it was like one person's the predator and the rest of us are prey. And you know, we're out at like a camp and there's all these wooded areas and decks and all these places to like kind of hide. But you also, you don't like hide per se, you move around, like you're rolling and you, uh, you kind of watch the predator and the predator tries to find you and then you get stalked until you get caught so you get tagged and then you have to go lay in the middle of the the grass with all like the dead prey until the last guy's caught and when you're high as fuck on a mushrooms that shit felt crazy <laughs> like getting chased down and trying to evade and it felt like you were actually like getting hunted. <laughs> but it was mad fun. Once I got to the place of accepting my high, you know? I've always been really bad with accepting my high on, on certain things. That's why I kind of just got to a point with weed and psychedelics that I was just like, um, I'm not built for this shit. I wish I could enjoy them, but Cause it seems so fun and like mind, mind opening, altering, enjoying, but I just struggle with the control aspect of it. And I've seen that go extremely bad in a bunch of cases with friends who are just not prepared to handle it and just flip right out run away disappear go to the hospital <laughs> like all these things and all they're gonna do is to put you in a room and make you wait it out anyways. That's another thing about shrooms that I never really liked was the come down or coming off them. Super weird. You just feel really strange. For quite a while after. Not as bad as an MDMA come down though, I'll tell you that. MDMA come downs are terrible. Legitimately feel brain dead.
everything comes with a price. If you're going to go up, you have to expect to come down. That's a yin yang, the one zero of life in full effect when you do drugs. Every action has a reaction and or consequence. And with drugs and alcohol, the second half fucking sucks. <laughs> I can tell you that for free. Like I said in that other wing video, these are the ones you gotta work at. Gotta gnaw. <laughs> Probably my favorite way though, to be honest. <sighs> so yeah, not the most nuts drug story by any stretch of the imagination, but just a little fun tale, thought you may enjoy. Uh, just brought back some memories for me and it may be a little bit relatable for, for you. I'm sure there's some of you out there who have had that experience when you're just coming up on something and you're like, uh, and you're like clinging to something to save you. You just like, you need something to like center your mind and get in that Zen. And then once you're in that Zen, you're like, okay, f I, I got it. Like, I got this. This is good. Like this, I can enjoy this now instead of being like, you know, combative against that, like frequency and energy, you know, initially. So those were delicious. Crushed the whole pile. I hope you enjoyed till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well, and stay true. Will they see me as commercially viable? Or will my channel just be ripped out from underneath me? Doors closed, sayonara. No more black hoodie. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hey yo, what up world? Back with another one. Uh, anytime it's wings, I feel like personally it's a, a fantastic video, but uh, I will say this, lately my wing videos have been getting Less play than they used to. I, I, I feel like I used to be the top tier wing guy out here in this muck community. And I don't know, I just, I chuck up wing videos lately and they only, they're not getting the love they used to. But I guess that's the way things go here on the old tube. Anyways, I'm very excited because anytime there's wings in front of me, it's a good day. My favorite food on the planet next to like a Whopper and some other things. But uh, let's just say what we got. We got... Uh, a honey hot barbecue that I chefed up. I just whipped up a sauce from the fridge and then I have the garlic parmesans, which are very famous out in the community. I feel like people love garlic parmesans. I got ranch, I don't do the blue cheese, carrots and celery. So let's get right to it. Some chats, I kinda wanna talk about something that feels kinda serious today regarding YouTube, it's stressing me out. But let's get to some wings and then we'll just chat. Before we do anything more, we must fill in the blank. Up, 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 up. Pour. We are breaching. Little ditty about Jack and Rose. She's a bitch and he froze. Okay. Lost his toes. Ended up at the bottom of the Osh. Just like the Hope diamond that she threw in at the end which was worth 1.3 billion mega dollars so we're not at, we're not impressed with rose that floozy getting naked on couches and shit showing her elizabethan times body to a young man cradle robbing but you know what they say Every artist needs their muse, and she was that for Jack, okay? Every uh, 
aristocratic beverage connoisseur needs their muse as well, and that for me is Diane Dr. Pepper. So we must have a sip. To be honest, when I drink that, I feel like I'm aboard the Titanic. First class, of course. First class. I'm so attached to that, I might even be the captain. I might go down with the ship. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so here we go. My wing game is a little too proper, but that's between me and the wings. I'm not really trying to flex on you that hard, but... I will. We're crispy. We're zispy, whatever that means. And by zispy, I mean zesty, tangy, garlicky, buttery, parmesan type sauce. Uh, do I want to ranch it? Yeah, I'll ranch it right off rip. Why not? Okay, we rotisserie one more time for you. I'm sorry. I'm very, I'm very food in the facey. I always shove it in your face. tell you why buy wings from somewhere else when I can make them at home better for like a third of the cost I'm telling you guys straight up right now this confirms that. I got to open, open a wing truck. Should I start a GoFundMe for a wing truck? Wow, it has to happen. I would totally open a food business. I just I don't have resources. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly, I'm so impressed with humans who like are able to get grants and like find ways and like resource, get resources to open businesses it's impressive I have no idea how to come with that what up with that kind of capital and of course the risks associated with it and food businesses are extremely risky Low profit margins. Not a ton of money to be made unless you do it very mu very properly. I was craving like a A sweet hot wing. So in that sauce I threw sweet baby rays. A bunch of Franks, hot sauce. Of course, my fave. Pepperoncini pickling liquid. Mm. 
Honey. Honey. Apricot jam. Let that melt out. And then it was a little bit thin, so I hit it with a little cornstarch slurry. Just to thicken it up. It's hitting very, very hard. One might call it the Ike Turner of sauces. <laughs> Too soon? I will say this though. The apricot jam was a late addition because on my initial taste, seemed a little too spicy. I was figuring, fuck it. Let me add some of this apricot jam. Turns out, that's actually what made it as good as, as it is. Really giving it a uh, unique type flavor and that ladies and gentlemen is what I want to impart to you is like in the kitchen just whip up random sauces add shit that you think feels crazy lots of times You'll stumble into amazing, unknown things. Such is life. Some of the most amazing findings or discoveries in the world are completely by accident. I swear. There's been times in life where I'm like editing stuff. Music or video or something. And I'll like, I'll click a wrong button and then something will happen. And then it'll like create this thing that I would have never thought of as like an accident, but a happy accident. And you're like, oh shit. That actually works like crazy. Yes. I just love the crisp level on these boys. Happy accidents. One of the best things in life. Some people might call that a baby. <laughs> Happy accident to change the course of your life. Some people don't always like the happy accident, though. Some people had a plan. I had a plan. And Sabrina, you weren't in it. Real shit though. 
Tehát szárul ne hármaz. I love when they're crispy and hard to get. I don't even mind that I gotta work at the bone for it. Not an issue. What a great batch. I wonder if at this point, celery fibers always freak me out, looking like hairs, but they're not. I wonder if at this point you guys are just tired of watching me eat wings by now. That'd be an interesting thing to find, find out. Over the course and history of the channel, how many wings I've eaten? <laughs> Tell you right now, it's a lot. So yeah, if you made it this far, what's up? How you doing? You're a late stayer in these vids. But YouTube is on some wild shit. Well, it's not really YouTube, but it is YouTube at the same time. It's the FTC and COPPA. FTC is like Federal Trade Commission. COPPA is just like Child Online Protection Act. Basically, they're getting crazy with child protection stuff. But YouTube was fined all this money because they violated these terms. They were fined like 170 like million, I think. Oh my god, look at that. And then now they've like that like prompted these governing bodies to say like we're coming in. We're sw we're sweeping the platform. We're getting rid of a bunch of channels that make content but aren't commercially viable, so they don't make money, don't make run ads. Tons of users and accounts are about to get deleted. If you don't comply, with their terms and set your videos to whether or not they're kid friendly or not, which I have done. I did my whole channel, so my channel's technically adult now. But if you don't go through and set the setting to set your channel to not kid friendly or whatever, when they do the sweep,
all your videos that you haven't selected for being non not kid friendly if they're not kid friendly they'll just get wiped deleted all those hard work videos all that hard work down the drain gonzo like it never was the part that worries me is that they're saying they're deleting channels that aren't commercially viable now my commercial or my channel is commercially viable because I run out to make money but my question is like what's the cutoff how successful do you have to be how much money do you have to be making generating for them for them to deem you as worthy to stay and continue to create like you know my channel is not I don't make that much money so it's like will they see me as commercially viable or will my channel just be ripped out from underneath me doors close sayonara no more black hoodie years of dedication and hard work and a source of income terminated I have a feeling I'll be okay given the nature of the content I really think food content will probably be fine It's not like controversial and I feel like food content is good for advertising. But we'll see. I'm just wondering how it's gonna affect subscriber counts like if they go through and delete a bunch of people who create but they're not monetized that watch me like how many accounts that is that are going to be gone how it's going to affect views all that stuff and it's starting December 10th and people are saying like literally people are like saying that 2020 is looking like YouTube doomsday oh and I forgot to mention that basically YouTube like change these terms of services saying that when the FTC and COPPA do their sweep of the content when they find videos in violation of their like laws or whatever that didn't get selected Like, the creator is solely responsible. And can be fined. Large sums of money. Per video. They were saying up to $42,000. Per video. Per infraction. So, 
I don't know. I've watched a bunch of other big creators. With videos talking about it. There's like petitions and shit. It legit sounds very serious. And people, big people too, are worried. Like, I can see the worry. Now, part of me believes, though, that the people that are actually the most worried are the creators who are making children family friendly content. Apparently, because it seems like those are the ones that are actually going to suffer. I think if you're in the adult space, you'll, you will be much better off. Safer, whatever. I don't think they're really coming for that. As long as you declare that you're an adult type channel, I think you should be okay. That right now, is my best understanding of what's going on. So, I'm intrigued to see how it plays out. I'm lightly terrified, but I'm also like, of the thought that How many times have we seen stuff like this go down with YouTube? And it like doesn't go as crazy as people think. <laughs> that wing face right there. Or it takes like way longer than they expected, and there's like It's more difficult to execute than they thought it was. There's backlash, etc., etc., etc. So I don't know. But at this point, it just sounds like some crazy, weird, wild, wild west shit. Just a lot of unknowns. And I can't pretend to be, like, aware enough about it to really speak on what will happen, but those are just the, the talking points that I've pretty much gathered this far. But I'm just praying that it all works out in, in my best interest, well, in everybody's best interest, but, you know. I just don't want to get fucked. That's all. Those were amazing. Way, way, way too good, to be honest. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. You know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true. I really don't know how, how it all works. I'm not good at religion, but I do know that apparently Jesus returns or and the world starts basically going to shit, hell in a handbasket. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah.
Hello and welcome to another installment of this strange thing that I do on the internet. I am your host, Black Hoodie, and today the low carb trend continues. We are having some wings, one of my favorite foods. Many of you know this. If there's anybody new, you may not know this. New information for you. I love wings. Definitely on my top three in life of foods. I usually have some vegetables, either like celery or carrots, but today I want no distractions. I want to go straight in, I want to clean bones, and I want to live in a wing paradise, okay? So I have a random flavor that I cooked up, which was a butter, lemon, pepper, and horseradish additive. I thought it would be a nice little bite ski on the palate, and then my sort of medium that I make at home with just a bunch of other people's sauces, like brands that I mix together and create this but I don't represent for brands anymore unless they reach out okay got some lemon for decorative really I might squeeze a little bit on these ones but for the most part she gone all right before we do anything more we must up 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 poor and we're back baby we're finally back the doctor was on the cave little hiatus doctor might have came down with it their own little sickness for a while and needed some tending to was off grid off radar but uh the doc is back and uh i'm ready for it because i've been off the doctor for a little bit and uh my ass needs saving so we fizz we bubble we fountain of fountain of youth we get closer and closer every day to these dreams of ours. Do we? I don't know. Hopefully. Oh, mm. That is crisp today because, ooh, ooh, hitting much different due to the fact that it's been so long for me, I feel like. And for me, a long time with that is like a week. Okay, so where do we go? Let's go into the lemon pepper, the more naked version. Bada bing, bada boom, nice and a little crispy. And uh, we're gonna ranch dip it right off top. Unreal. That lemon and butter cutting through perfectly. Nice and rich. Nice and crisp. Mmm. Wow, just enough lemon. Just enough pepper. The horseradish. Admittedly, it's kind of lost. But, you know, it's fine with me. They're still delicious. Okay. So this is like more of a medium. I love medium. Medium is definitely a 
my favorite wing flavor. Just not lighten me up, not too aggressive, not too intrusive. Just a beautiful, fun time. Mm. Clean your bones, people. Clean your bones man if I had one wish honestly in this world it would be that my nose doesn't get itchy when I eat I don't know what this is but it happens to me all the time someone should do a super cut of my videos from over the years black hoodie incessantly itches nose while cramming his face it would definitely have to be a hater to do it like one of those shade channels, those tea bangs or whatever. Those people uh, that have made now. It's so crazy to me that mukbang has got to the point. I never saw this coming, but. Mukbang has got to the point where there's literally a community of. Channels, creators now. That basically shade, throw shade at, make fun of YouTubers or mukbangers and cover the drama. And these channels. I have a ton of subscribers and they make, they have huge views. I mean, I should have known eventually that was going to be a thing. Because these type of channels exist. In a lot of other lanes. So it's like, why wouldn't it happen here? But that's just crazy now to think of. So basically, because we, <clears throat> well, not me, because I've never been featured in one of these channels. It's a point of pride for me, to be honest, to have never been like shade banged or whatever. I've never been like made fun of on one of these channels. Which I'm happy about, but a 
it's crazy that the ripple effect of people mukbanging has essentially started a whole new category of creators and inspired these people to have this I don't you know creative outlet that they have one interesting thing to point out though is that all of these shade channels are faceless I'm hoping one day one of them will have the balls to go full Keemstar and just own it shred people report on them but be a face face up Probably never will happen. I haven't spoken on this yet. But it's actually nuts. Is <clears throat> I've been keeping an eye on the whole Australia thing. The Australia fires. Shit's insane. So... For those people that I know in Australia, because I know some people in Australia, I hope you stay safe. I hope everything goes well. Like, I hope you get to a safe area. And, uh, come out of this okay. That shit is nuts. Is this the rapture? It was 2020. Finally the time. That these prophecies come true. Jesus de descends upon us lake of fire or whatever all that stuff you know I really don't know how, how it all works I'm not good at religion but I do know that apparently Jesus returns or and the world starts basically going to shit hell in a handbasket like whatever Trump's up to right now is insano with Iran so who knows on the cusp of World War 3 Australia is on fire, like completely. A 
signs of the times. What's going on out there? <clears throat> There's actually this one ASMR artist. Who's legit one of my favorites. And his name is Aussie Aussie Man ASMR. If you don't know him, and you like uh simple just talking like whispering ASMR he's got some of the best videos I've ever heard for that lane but I went over to his wall the other day to see if he's been affected He's still uploading, so it seems like he's all good. But he hasn't made a video with any commentary. regarding his own personal situation. Am I sweating under the eyes? Probably. I'm always in debate. I'm like, do I kind of clean up and go for a drink? Or do I just keep pushing through? Because I have this thing where I hate getting the exterior of my cup dirty. I find it disgusting. I respect my cup too much to do that to it. itchy nose I just hate the feeling of picking up a greasy ass saucy ass cup That one bite in there was extra special. I don't know what that was. But it was maze balls. home stretch and this is an easy finisher today guys I think at this point I've I'm fasted 26 hours so my hunger levels For this video, we're popping.
at an all-time high. Not to mention, I've been on the low carb. So like, between yesterday's low carb meal and now the stomach's ready you know there's not a lot of whole lot of bread or big stuff to digest I think this was probably about technically like three pounds, about 20, I think probably 27 wings. Usually these packs are about 27. which is generally, if I go to like an all you can eat or a cheap wing night, I usually hit three pounds then tap out. Anything further is, usually gets too far. Cleaning bones to the very end. That's what it's about. Mm, almost perfect. What a great meal. What a perfect, fulfilling, satiating not too full, just right. Goldilocks wing meal. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true. I'm gonna be somebody. I'm gonna make it out here. I'm gonna get this bag and have fun while I'm doing it, eating, and I'm gonna be the next B Love. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Well, 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 what up, world? Call me jacked, call me hyped, call me jazzed, but uh, these are looking a little too nice. I'm very, very excited. Uh, this is another way I do wings. I'll have to show you it one day. It involves actually frying with oil, like hot oil. Um, don't burn your house down. And, uh, you know, some flour, some cornstarch, battering, things of this nature. A man must get, a man must get his thumbnail. So, we do that now. 
So I feel like as of late, my wing videos have been too cute, too ASMR, not enough. You know, I, I just, I, you know, a nice chat with some buffalo wings, a nice savage chat and savage eating. Is it a savage chat? I don't know. But we do eat these buffalo wings in honorarium, memoriam, I don't know what you want to call it, of something that I'm going to have to touch on today in the topic of, am I past the point of no return? And today we will answer this question and eat these wings. Let's have a smash of a bite and then we talk about the topic being past the point of no return. And you're probably confused. What do you mean? I mean, as a YouTuber, and we'll, just, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But in the meantime, we must dig deep inside ourselves and get one of these beautiful wing dingers. These are the fall part. Post, Mal Post Malone, mm, I fall apart, goodness. That's what these are. Watch how easy. That's what you call clean, right there. That's clean. Okay, so. point of no return so if there's any other youtubers in my same vein or in general um, with a, a general amount of success on YouTube write down in the comments if you know the struggle that I'm about to talk about but uh, being past the point of no return is basically you start out your channel because it's a fun cute, entertaining thing to do. You found some weird shit. You got into it. You said, I could do that. So you started doing it. You started just getting in front of the camera. It's all fun and games. You notice you start getting some subscribers well that's fun that's very fun that's that this is fun I like this so now you're getting comments you're getting subscribers you're getting more motivated You see some potential here. Okay. Now you got a few thousand subscribers and you're eligible for monetization. Oh, wait, this is a real thing. I can actually make money. There's, mo there's money involved here. This is crazy. Did I just start my own little business? I think I did. Does it revolve around eating? It sure does. Wow, that's cool. I could definitely do that. Okay. All right. I got you. I see you, YouTube. I see you, self. I see you, audience. Let's go on a journey, okay? So you start going on a journey. Now you're grinding. I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to make it out here. I'm going to get this bag. And have fun while I'm doing it. Eating. And I'm going to be the next B-Love. I'm going to be B-Love. Life's going to be good. Now, if you find yourself in, you know, 20, 30, 40, type thousand, maybe higher, subscriber range, chances are, like me, like 
opening video, my one viral video, uh, somewhere along the way, for your subscribership to shoot up like that, is you get your your glow up moment. I feel like anybody who gets up there decent in subscribers at one point or another had a little glow up. You got a viral video. It was your one shot. And some people get like 100,000 or more or go huge. And some people like me, I got like a nice 20, 25K nugget all at once, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. It was great. But then you find yourself, and this is what I've learned about YouTube, or I'm learning, but I don't know if it's to be true because I think you can push on and, and beat it. Is did you get your 15 minute one shot? Are you now stuck in the slow grind? Can you re up? Keep pushing up your con content quality, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and go big again? Or are you stuck in slow grind purgatory, hoping and wishing on a dream? But at the same time, You've also built a sustainable percentage of audience to where now you do have a sustainable business to where your videos are worth making, right? And yeah, like you love them, they're fun. Still like to do them, but from a business perspective, they're still viable because they're still a good little income source. But you beg yourself the question, am I past the point of no return? Have I gone so far that at this point, I have no choice but to keep on grinding? I put myself out hundreds of videos of me doing some weird shit. Eating, talking crazy, being wild, exposing myself raw for the world to see. I can't go back on that now. The internet is forever. I promise you, if I shut down my channel today, Someone's got my videos saved somewhere to reopen up Black Hoodie 2. I can't escape this shit. And that's where the no return comes in. There is no return once you've done this. half the reason why when you guys are like asking about my real name and stuff it's like I never really wanted to use my real name because I 
I want to have it searchable and connected to this. Like most people doing YouTube that aren't big enough still have to work and like, you know, a lot of times this type of stuff will infringe upon your ability to get work. Some people in, in this day and age, people, employers will search out your socials. They can make judgments based off your socials. And on here, I got all kinds of crazy stories. <laughs> that would make somebody not want to hire me. <laughs> Drinking, partying. Wild shit. You got it. So, luckily, in my work experience, it hasn't been that serious. I'm not trying to be at a bank or whatever. Or working for a Fortune 500 company type thing, so not that big a deal but you sit and lay in bed at night and ask yourself can I go the distance can I keep this going can I keep it growing or is it just gonna fizzle away and fade away and eventually my 10% of audience retention turns into 1% and I'm fucked or do you pump up the quality of your content pump out the content try to get the shit truly popping again ride another motherfucking wave I choose the ladder we gonna do it or at least try because I accept the fact that I've come too far and I am in fact past the point Gross. I made it all cinematic. But you know what I mean. You get what I'm putting down. Also, just a point for y'all when it comes to wings, and I hate that I did it with these. Basically, if you buy wings fresh from the store and you freeze them, that's when they get that like brown, purple dark inside and I hate it that I did it with these because it makes it look a little like less visually appealing for the viewer which sucks but I grabbed a big pack I ate one half and then I froze the other but you'll see what I'm talking about maybe just a pro tip to bring you some value in your life This one's not so bad, but that's why a lot of times at restaurants they'll be like that. Like very dark, like dark inside, dark purple, like that way. Kind of throws you off. Yeah, these are kind of throwing me off. You guys know I usually clean bone, but I'm not like 
I love the flavor. Everything's good. It just sometimes the like visual aesthetic or something can uh, throw you for a loop. So I'm digging the the veggies though. But yeah, 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 yeah. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, if you have any comments regarding my uh, beautiful insanity in my head about this YouTube shit, you let me know. You just you just comment right there down below. Okay. So till the next one, you know what to do. You gotta eat good, live well, stay true. Black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, yes, hello. There have been some whispers in the comments lately saying, hey man, really enjoy your wing videos. I know I've done a million of them, but we want another one. Bring them back. Bring back a classic wing video. And uh, anytime, any place, anywhere, any day, I crave wings. So uh, uh, that's what we're gonna do today. However, there's a slight twist. We're gonna take my favorite food my favorite beverage and make them have culinary sexual activity together and birth an amalgam of both. So that means they are gonna come together and make one delicious thing in my mouth, okay? So let's get to it. So first things first, we're gonna get these boys into a bowl and then into a bath. While I'm getting these ready for the bath, I'll tell you, this video is also gonna knock out another request from a long time ago. If you'll notice, they're all flats. And I couldn't be more excited because flats are my favorite part of the wing. All right, crank on the cold. Water is nice and clean, nice and clear, under control. Good and fresh, ready to roll. Uh oh, a couple down there. Luckily, I just scrubbed this out. Next up, I got buttermilk here. These are going in there, and they're going to, that's going to be the adhesive for the dredge. Now we make the dredge, the coating. Very, very simple. I'm going to let the flavors of the sauces do the work. This is strictly just for us coated exterior, nice and crunch. And in order to achieve that, we go a bunch of flour and a bunch of cornstarch, equal parts basically. A little half and half mix. Done and done, that's all she wrote, that easy. Okay, so now that that's situated, we're gonna get the Dr. Pepper, a couple cups in a pot, a little medium low heat. Put a little bit of honey in there already. I wasn't, the, the camera wasn't on. And then cornstarch, this is a slurry. So just cornstarch and water. Just want to get it together. So as not to be lumpy, but the cornstarch will bring the sauce into its true thickness. Add that in. And that's a crazy reaction I wasn't expecting. Things you learn while cooking. Cornstarch is reacting crazy with the Dr. Pepper Fizz. On the other burner, we're going in with the lemon pepper, which is going to be a big hunk of butter. And this super real lemon, as you see. And this dollar store lemon pepper seasoning. A little lemon pepper seasoning from the dollar store, buck or two. In there. Take a look in a book, reading rainbow. Anybody remember reading rainbow? I sure do. Yeah, lemon butter, lemon pepper. She good, just that easy, simple. All right, that's coming along, reducing down nice. Liquid hot magma. All right, so we're going to let that simmer and thicken for a while. And while that's happening, 
you got to get these <laughs> wangs on the go, get this oil ready. Fire this up high. Oil in the old wooden something in the middle test. They're both kind of soupy, leaking everywhere. Still good though, still good. Some regular naked ones too. And of course, ranch and some BBQ. <laughs> Buttery, sloppy sauce. Nakeds, Dr. P, Lemon P. Saucy. All right, yo, what up? Back with uh, some wings today. The lemon pepper, the Dr. Pepper, soggy. They didn't really come together. It's a fail already, to be honest with you. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. I brought the uh, Sweet Baby Rays as a contingency plan. Have some naked here. To be honest, they remind me very, like, kind of Popeyes-y. Celery, of course, ranch. And the star of the show, if we're going to have Dr. Pepper wings, we might as well have a full Suge night, you know what I mean, when it comes to the drink, so... Before we do anything more we must pour i am sweating my britches right now from just that cooking and running up and down and all around trying to fucking get this situated and get this angle right and everything like that but uh we're here and we're ready and we're finally gonna crush i can't wait these are gonna be so fall off the bone just wing king tender and yes i'm making this video because in a bunch of my videos lately, I've just had a lot of requests being like, yo, can you do like a, just like a, just, just a wings video again, or just kind of crush it like you used to with the wings. So that's what we're doing on this one. Uh, a little different style though. I didn't used to dredge and all that. I used to basically just stop zooming on my face. I used to basically just, um, oil them with salt and cook them in the oven but uh i figured i'd do it different today okay i think we have to go with the dr pepper first being that that's the theme of the video i just want like the least soggy one because like i said that sauce didn't really thicken up but these definitely have a great crust 
and uh, we're about to find out exactly how decent this is. Wing King, maybe. Very mild, very subdued in, in terms of the Dr. Pepperiness of it. But basically, sweet is really the most that I'm getting. is just a sweet profile with like a hint of the Dr. Pepper. But if it had thickened up and came together better, it would, of course, be better. This is where I'm looking to go. I've been thinking about these the whole time I was cooking them. The lemon peppers. Butter, lemon, lemon pepper, and I put a little bit of Parmesan. Mm. Watch this. See how clean that is? We gotta go ranch. The lemon peppers are crushing it. Clean. Nothing but net. Mm. Yeah, the lemon peppers at the ranch. Doing the most right now. Okay. Naked and afraid. But we gotta go. Sweet baby Ray on that. Alright. Mmm. I wanna just do one clean, like. Like a double down. There we go. One bone out. The rest is history. Mm -hmm. The full sugar doctor doing its work on the plating. I forgot my celery, but I got it just in time for the vid. I'm starving. It's like four in the afternoon. I kept my meal real light yesterday. I barely ate, had a long day. So I'm ready for this. Y'all ready for this? I was fully debating before making this video. I was like, should I either make this video or because it's Sunday, I was going to go go live and cook a brunch live with you guys have a couple vodka OJs and cook live and jam out and have Sunday breakfast with you but The wings are the best to me. I'm telling you, you gotta make them just like this. Fall off the bone. Just slide right off. So good. That's definitely the difference. When I do the oil naked ones in the oven, they're more like, you really got to get at them. 
Got a gnaw. These ones, the inside stays crazy moist. Mm. Yeah, the Dr. Pepper ones, kind of soggy, of course. My bad. All right, yo, I'm back. If this looks and seems different, the angle and everything, it is. My camera battery just died. It's one of those videos happening to me. Just a lot of weird shit going on with this video while I was cooking and stuff. You guys, of course, don't know about it because I cut it out. With the power of editing. But I'm now on my iPhone, which is also like down to its last two gigs of memory. Because <laughs> I got way too much shit on it. I have to clear it out. It's so annoying. Do you guys ever... Like hate having to go and like dump files and save them and shit from your phone. First world, pro first world problems, but it is very annoying. Mine especially because the reason why my phone is so full is whenever inspiration hits, musically, I take like voice notes and I have like hundreds of voice notes of melodies and shit that are like very important to me. Do not want to lose them. for cooking future songs, but there's so many of them that I hate, like having to transfer them somewhere and putting them in like a safe place on my computer. It's not the greatest, not the greatest at all. What is the greatest? These fall apart flats. The lemon pea in specific. Hitting the spot hard. Oh. oh, why are you so good? The full sugar. You know, the diet's good, but anything with the full sugar is just that much more intoxicating. Okay. One more. And then I'd be done. Oh, look at that. That thing's just dripping butter. Pretty satisfied right there. Um, I'm mainly wrapping this up though because I don't know if my phone's gonna, how long it's gonna go for. So I don't want to risk it. 
and not be able to have a proper ending to this video, but I uh, highly encourage you to try ones like this at home if you want fall apart off the bone. Crunchy, crispy, tender. Wang. Do it. Definitely do it. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that one. Until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, charge your batteries for your camera, stupid, and stay true. Black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah.
the thing, but a turkey leg. So in spirit of the turkey wings being huge, I figured I'd leave the celery ginormous as well.
Miss Hoodie, as you guys knew her, but I think we gotta put that name to rest. So if I've ever seen my ex, that's what I'm referring to.
I know immediately you're thinking, is this guy's face as red as the devil's asshole? Well, there's a good explanation for that. It has to do with the Toronto Raptors celebration parade and the fact that I'm a really white dude who can't tan worth, worth a shit. And this is my first uh, uh, real exposure to the sun this summer. Medium garlic parm. Let's get to eating and talking because today has been an insane day. I went out today to the Toronto Raptors. just in the sun from 9.30 in the morning. I just experienced one of the most scariest things of my life tonight. Insanity was the mayor of Toronto declared
video. I'm gonna edit it up. Get it. Get it all going. Essentially, a really weird, crazy thing happened along the way. As the day was going on, I could see the streets. somebody is going to use this as an excuse. So I'm cruising around doing my thing in the day. and float arrive. At the main spot where the after party is supposed to be, where all the people have been waiting for hours and hours and hours.
once I got to the main main level, I just like hung out for a while to make sure like the smoke was clear, like.
so much time has passed. So much stuff has happened. So much to explain. I invite you to come. Come with me. Be my ear. Be my soulmate. Yeah. Owen Wilson, yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking around. Yo, been a minute since we've been up in it. And I'm not going to apologize for it because I've been going through some shit. And by that I mean moving and within moving came a fuck ton of difficulties and challenges and still to, to like just right now for me to have this opportune moment to do this is kind of rare. So it's just been a bit of a headache, uh, but definitely like positive things, good things moving forward. Um, very like happy with my new situation is just working out the little kinks and the details and I'll detail you all about it. Um, obviously, I'm going to do a mukbang today. I've never done one alone. Or did I do one alone? No, I don't think so. I, the first one I did was with my girlfriend, which we can touch on that too. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do today. I just, this window of opportunity came upon my came upon us and uh, I just I just figured fuck it like I'm just gonna wing it really gonna wing it today don't like that joke too cheesy lots of sticks what's up right here no pull to them cuz I they all leaked out it's a leaky pipe a cheesy leaky pipe pretty bullshit they're store-bought what do you expect also I cooked them at the start when I put the wings in and I thought oh yeah they'll be ready at the same time it's like dude wings take so much longer what are you trying to do I'm like I don't know man and then I just I got an argument with myself and yeah, we resolved it we're good now I might get lucky if like two of these have filling anyways I pulled them out halfway I left them to the side finished the wings off and then put them back in for like a re a quick reheat. Um, <clears throat> these wings are nothing special. They're just like I said, store bought uh, buffalo. Uh, they were pre sauced. That's a packaging error on their part because I think you should just give dry wings and then put buffalo sauce on the side so you can just sauce them yourself after they're cooked. Because when you cook them with the sauce on them, it just dries up and goes away. So, anyways, also got this. Uh, Sweet onion chipotle barbecue, which I guess should be probably pretty good. I'm hoping. And then obviously Hidden Valley Ranch. You gotta have a ranch with wings, classic combination. If you don't do it, I don't know who you are. Um, I don't know who you are because I just never met you, but still. Um, it's gotta be Hidden Valley. If it's not, you're just, you're selling yourself short. You need to get on to what is hot and what is hot is Hidden Valley. Um, okay, I think we should start eating probably and then I'll tell you some shit. Also, I've got the bowl here for the bones. I had one already. I forgot that I had like another bunch of videos on my phone from like old stuff of mukbang and that. So my phone was like, no, I can't record anymore. And I was like, Perfect, already started eating, so everything's getting colder and colder. And I've been talking for four minutes, so shut the fuck up and eat. Okay, perfect, moving on. Great, thank you. Really good, yeah. It's driving my girlfriend, that's my own Wilson, by the way. I'm just, I don't know where it came from, why I'm doing it, but I love it lately, so. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get one of these wings directly in the ranch. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm all about the wing part, like the flat guy. I don't can't remember if that's just called the wing or not, because I know the whole thing is technically the wing. And it flies away. But um, I prefer that over the drumstick. I know that this, I think, is pretty much just called the drumstick. But then again, I could be wrong as well. I'm not a fucking food connoisseur. Uh, I should know more than this, but I don't. All right. Nice and saucy. Oh fuck, I forgot. 
napkins and fuck. I forgot paper towel or napkins. What a grade eight move. That is a rookie mistake. I'm sorry. I actually just have to get up and like go right there by directionally challenged when it's backwards. By the light. There's an Okay, just going away. Bear with me. Guys, I'm still here. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, look at all that paper. Oh, mad stacks. Oh. Back into position. So many stacks. I can call me Birdman out this bitch. Okay. Nice. All right, we're back. We're situated. We're having fun. We're doing cool stuff. It's loud. It's a mukbang, bang, boom thing. All right. From jump, I'm actually pretty impressed with these wings. Uh, just get another store-bought box wings like not too bad Pretty nice like when I cook them I go extra on the time frame like the box says whatever time and I don't adhere to it because I find they come out Just still kind of like The meats like it's just like wobbly, like it's just jiggly and I like my chicken to be a little more more dry. Like I like my chicken on menopause, just nice and dry, essentially, is what I'm saying. It's what I'm really getting at without trying to beat around the bush. But yeah. I much prefer The wingy part to the drumstick because sometimes these ones, not always, depending on what like the brand you get or where you are, if it's a quality wing, you might not run into the problem. But even in that, even at some restaurants and stuff, it's like on those like drum parts, there's just like you run into the issue of what I like to call like. Frank and meat, and it's like antibiotic up, like just Frank and meat. Like you kind of don't know what it is. Like it's a, it's a cartilage. Is it like a tumor? Not sure. Probably don't want to eat that. So maybe you do want to. Eat it. Maybe you want to keep eating it because you're starving or you paid for it. But. That's a good gauge of you knowing about how much of a real piece of shit you are. And I mean this in the way that a lot of us are. We're all real pieces of shit sometimes, just to varying degrees. Um, <laughs> when you When you eat shitty, shitty food, and what I mean by shitty, shitty food is like, this is shitty food. This is like low quality, cheap, like no name brand bullshit food that you shouldn't really probably even eat. And then when you cook it and you taste it and it tastes like shit, <clears throat> if it's shitty, shitty food, and then you keep eating it, that's how you know you're a real piece of shit. And it's one of the ways to gauge. But hey, no judgment here. I'm a real degenerate.
big time low life. Sometimes, not always, but I don't have very high standards for a lot of stuff. So it's all gravy, baby. Yeah, as yeah, much as your life. Just all stiff up, like they're just no fucking string to them at all. There's like a good good one night stand. No strings attached. None at all. But I don't do that anymore. Cause I have a girlfriend. And we did a mukbang together, which you guys saw and watched. We were pretty drunk. It was super random, very spur of the moment. But it was fun times. We said some funny shit, some dumb shit. Had a couple cute moments. I do want to say thank you, though, to everybody who commented on it. And, like, it was all positive. There was no real, like, shitty bitchy people or anything so anytime you avoid that on YouTube it's just like a fucking golden star victory polish up your trophy and you win cause I don't talk about degenerates and real pieces of shit people on YouTube commenters on YouTube are just horrendous human beings sometimes but you know life is about a balance and there's always gonna be the light and the dark. Evil and good. Stupid idiots and conscious human beings who know what the fuck's going on because they're awake and aware. And have the ability to see things from multiple, multiple perspectives. And not from like a sorry, woe is me, uneducated, ignorant, bullshit, idiot perspective. Which, by the way, is what trolls are, so don't really let them affect you if you do have a channel. What are they doing? They're doing nothing, so at least you're doing something. Trying to do something. A passionate moment. Okay. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't get any fancy liquid for this, just uh, one hydrogen, two oxygens. Bobby Boucher's uh, favorite passion, water. I'm gonna try this sweet onion chipotle barbecue. It just kind of caught my eye off the shelf. I just love chipotle anything, really, except for chipotle, the actual chain restaurant. But the flavor, that chipotle, like, pep like the pepper or whatever, I like that, like sweet potato fries with like chipotle sauce and, oh my god. I'm such a pussy. There we go. Yeah, like, but it was like a dollar seventy-seven, pretty hot deal, so I figured I'd give it a try. Since I, oh fuck, I poured way too much. Make sure you get the gooey gooey off the side because it's going to create problems for you down the line. It's going to overflow and turn into like a sauce booger on the top of your bottle, which you don't want. They're gross. Regular boogers are gross. Any kind of booger is gross. So just avoid sauce boogers, real boogers if you can. But we're all human. We all breathe in dust. And we have hairs in our nose that do that for us. So. It is what it is. I don't know how long this is going to be. We're already at 15 minutes. Okay, it sucks that I know I ate the majority of my favorite part, but I'm left with all the drums now, which is kind of really whack. Also, guys, just so you know, when you open a fresh bottle of something like this and it doesn't go... Keep an eye out for that. Because 
I'm giving you fair warning. When you don't hear the when you open a new bottle or something like that, that means a rapist murderer has come into your local market, opened up that bottle, injected it with poison, followed you home to know where you live, to hopefully come back to find you very dead to follow up on the rapist part of his name as a rapist murderer. Okay? Just know that. That's what that means. I got very morbid very fast. Yes, I found one more, it's the last one, but it looks like it has a boo-boo and that it hurt its leg and that it might be one of those kind of icky ones that's broken inside and all like purple and nasty. Looks like I'm gonna get away scot-free on that one. Mm-hmm. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. In the words of Mr. LL Cool J. I believe, I think, that was his, one of his famed rap songs. Anyways, sorry for that last part. Got a little morbid uh, with the whole rapist murderer thing, but some sickles in the world. And This is another thing I've been struggling with lately about sickles in the world and morbid. There's morticians. People at the morgue. It's a terrifying thought to know that when you die, granted you die fairly naturally and your body is left in normal tact. These motherfuckers look like assholes. You're gonna end up on a cold steel bed, no blankets, no pillows, no comfort, freezing your ass off. You have shrinkage because you're cold and you're dead. And this motherfucker's standing there over you and he has the ability and power to do anything that they want to do. That's fucked up. I have a fear that when I'm dead and I have shrinkage, they're either gonna, they're probably gonna flick my dick, cut it off, and then maybe, I don't know from there what they're gonna do, but I just don't want them to do that. So, just another thought, just kind of strange. <sighs> okay, how do I save myself from that one? He's like, this guy is fucking strange. But these, like I said, this is why I want to do mukbangs, because like these are the thoughts that I have sometimes. They're terrifying. Like these are real life scenarios that happen to human beings. So that's kind of crazy. Um, so this, as you can see, it's kind of my it's my for now new setup. It's not uh Trying to find, see, there's like some sketchy Franken meats in these. Like, I don't, I don't really like you, sir. You look less intense and fat, so I'm gonna try you. Um, this is my new setup. It's just like it's my for now setup. Um, excuse me. It's pretty good. I dig it. Compared to my old one, it's like literally the fucking. Lazy boy setups. Like I just feel like so much more comfortable. Like I'm moving around. I'm not sitting on the ground in a weird position. I'm at like line level. You can see like the whole of my body plus the food. Just feel like, you know, back like in the seventies when they got the lazy boy, the TV dinner thing, and they were just like living the dream. Like it was just fucking everybody gather around, 
We're gonna throw on fucking whatever cool show from back then. Whatever was the hot one. Growing pains, probably, I guess, or something like that. And we're all just gonna lounge out, pull up a tray of Salisbury steak, corn and mashed potatoes. And just fucking get it in as a family. Like, you know? There's nothing like getting it in as a family. Like, when you have a good family vibe, you're all sharing a meal. Manja, manja. Everybody's in. We're getting satiated. We're happy. Whole crew's there. You know? Those are all good things. To elaborate though on like why my new setup has been a bitch. Um, it's unfinished, like there's still construction going on. The guys outside are like laying out in a courtyard, so they're like they're laying down the found the they're laying down bricks, so like dudes have been like cutting fucking stone and like there's beeping of trucks and for like twelve hours a day. Just my luck, the fucking unit beside me is uh, unfinished. So I've been from seven till six, seven a.m. till six p.m. I've been hearing power tools and hammering and just a lot of unfortunate stuff. That's really kind of grinding my gears, um, especially because of the industry that I work in. I don't work like I don't go to work in the morning. I don't get up at six thirty or like to go to work. Like I sleep until like almost, you know, 12 p.m. or so. Maybe a bit later sometimes. And then I work from like four till 12 or, you know, five till one, two, two in the morning. So it's like super inconvenient for me to try getting fucking sleep around here. And yeah, uh, just stressful, like, Outside of that though, the place is dope. Like I'm very happy with it. Um, if you guys want me to do like a little tour video or something, I could show you the layout of the new digs. I got a nice little patio. I'm on the third floor, so I'm not too, too high up, which is actually kind of nice. I'd rather be closer to the ground just cause it's A, if there's a fire, you probably don't die. And B, it's just like a quicker elevator ride. and my patio is bigger due to the fact that I'm on a lower floor anyways. So like, that's a kind of a bonus. So, um, got a patio, like everything's all new. Um, space is good. Bathroom shower, all that shit's cool. Standard condo. Like it's all that. It's got like a full gym and like a rooftop patio and like another side patio thing. And then it's got like this, like it's called the, the amenity, but it's essentially a party room. The dog going ballistic outside right now for no good reason. Could be a good reason. I don't know. I don't know what he's barking at. Um, yeah, so it's an, it's called amenity. It's a party room. When I when it when I went to go in, I was just like, I just thought it was being some very like standard thing, like very unassuming. But I went in there and holy fuck, dude! It's like phew, it's like walking into fucking Jay Z's crib. Like it's crazy. There's it's insane. Uh, there's like 70 inch flat screens, L couches in, in one part of the room, pool tables. Uh, there's a patio off it. And there's another room called the social, which it just looks like you go do cocaine in essentially. There's like the main room, which is like where hoity toity people would like sit and like have a cocktail by like the fireplace and like lean. Um, then there's like a main bar, like a full bar. And then there's like bottle service style booths sitting in, like are we going around. Anyway, it's baller status as fuck, and I'm gonna probably try to book my birthday there, which is in about a month, a uh, month and a half. So that's a cool feature for sure. Um, yeah, unfortunately, these the last wings are fucking whack, dude. Like, like I said, I don't really like them. They're just low quality purchase wings, and just really like. Uh, Franken meat, like, like just growth hormones, HGH, what the fuck. 
Um, covered some shit in this video. Could have been weird at points, but it is what it is. I am who I am. Uh, my next video, I'll do something cool, and I actually have, so Estella Ruiz, like I mentioned, she, I said that she asked me a question, she actually asked me uh, a bunch of questions, and I'm going to answer them at some point, probably next video, didn't get around to in this video, I don't want to go too long on this, um, if and there's anybody else out there with questions for me to add to them, please do, um, I'm going to slam this here water. And until next time, which I'll make fairly soon, stay cool. What up, y'all? Back with another cooking video. Today, we're going to be getting to some homemade wings. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to do the prep for the Asian-inspired sauce green onions chop those bitches up uh, next you're gonna want to do some garlic just smash that down chop it up make it nice and fine uh, next up we are going to bring in some cashews we gonna go nuts with the shit um, just chop that up real fine and then we're gonna move on to the citrus aspect a nice little sweet little you know tartness uh, toss those cashews in the pan get them roasty toasty that adds just like a nice extra layer of flavor uh, add the green onions once those are toasted same with uh, the garlic and now we're gonna add the Canadian twist of the maple syrup Asian twist of the sambal nice little spicy note a little vinegar just for some balance hoisin sauce sweetness uh, sodium as well oh shit the money shot with that orange gel all right so that's all in there spin that shit up get it cooking nice um, it's gonna reduce down obviously get nice and thick so that it'll coat those wings once they're done thank god it's friday cheers motherfuckers <laughs> next we're gonna build the other wing sauce i'd add in mind so just a honey mustard honey mustard goes well with chicken so just you know throw honey in throw some spicy mustard in throw regular mustard tabasco little bit of mayo just for some creaminess spin it up it's perfect you know what they say one good thing deserves another if you like it, you like a and putting tequila in your face yeah. all right we're gonna get the chicken down start frying those i literally just washed these wings that's it i didn't do anything to them other than i'm just gonna fry them and that's what you're gonna look for just nice and golden brown Oh, Dan Julio, I love you so much. Un cerveza, por favor? I know, that means beer. I know. All right, now we're going to sauce these hoes up. Start with buffalo. Just the easiest to clean the bowl. Back with the uh, Asian-inspired sauce. Sort of that, like, just sticky, sweet, hot, nutty sauce. And then the honey mustard. The honey mustard. The honey, honey mustard. So spin those up and then just plate. Boom, there you go. Everything. Accoutrement. A little celery, a little ranch, orange for decoration, and some fresh uh, green onion. <laughs> what up, y'all? What's good? Uh, back with another one, another cooking tutorial. You guys seem to really like the steak sando. So I uh, just tried to do some wings. To be honest, like I'm not really, I haven't done a ton of wings in my day. Um, this is like, you know, very few and far between, but those sauces just kind of in my head and, uh, I just figured, fuck it. TGIF, it's fucking Friday. You guys saw, I had a couple tequilas, feeling a little rosy in the cheek, feeling a little nice. So, uh, just got the night to chill, to do fuck all. And I was like, yo, let me, uh, let me make some wings, some a couple flavors. So Asian inspired. Honey mustard. Honey mustard wing might seem weird, but I just feel like chicken and honey mustard goes together really, really well. And then, as you saw, packaged buffalo sauce. <laughs> I did not have the uh, the patience to, to make a buffalo sauce from scratch. So 
I just kind of teethed it from a pack of uh, wings that I made like a week or two ago. Uh, anyhow, let's fucking get right into it. Um, mm, Buffalo is pretty good. So I'm going to start with a honey mustard. I feel like I just love honey mustard. The uh, the wings themselves, I may have over not overcooked them, but a couple are like extra crispy, and a couple are uh, probably just right, essentially. So let's see. I myself prefer my wings to be extra crispy. Mm, these are so good. I don't like when they are uh, when you bite into them and they're kind of jiggly or. They don't, uh, they don't have like a crunch. They're just kind of like, I just hate undercooked chicken essentially is what I'm trying to say. Uh, in my tequila mind, oh, these are so sticky. So this sauce that you saw come together there, first time trying it, just a thought I had in my mind. Wow. Can really get that citrus coming through from the orange. Mm. So sticky. Definitely get that hint of that Canadian twist, that maple syrup. And the spiciness from the sambal. Definitely get a little toast from the cashew. Mm. So good. So the other thing too is like to make this oh look at that this is like toffee that sauce I'm gonna go for another one of these because they're so good the fresh green onion though it seems like it's for presentation it's actually really nice with the bites. Mm. Now, so to, to make these, the wings, I got 16 pieces of wings between the drum and the drumette. For seven bucks. And then the rest of the stuff is like half the shit I just had in my house. And then a couple things I picked up at the store. But realistically, this is like a ten dollar meal. Plus like a bunch of it you still have left over after and you can use with other stuff. This is the buffalo. things about wings they're fucking it's a savage food 
You gotta not give a fuck. I just gotta go in for it. Lots of people have all these like uh, techniques of doing it all in one bite and that, and that's all fair and good. But just know this: the one rule about wings is just fucking you got to just go in for it. Can't be nervous. Mm. Celery and ranch. Amazing little palate refresher. This is a good flavor combination. Good for cooling it down if it's too hot. But yeah. Nothing worse than people who eat wings. Take a look at that. And like. Don't savage it. When they leave behind. All the delicious meat. On the tips and the ends. Go for it. Just gotta go for it. cup of water here I don't know if you can see in this glass but it's a it's like a big glass but it's got it's like a beer bottle upside down looks kind of lame with water in it but if it had like a, a beer or something in it it'd be pretty cool a nice little orange slice here for decoration but I'm actually gonna Incorporated into a bite, I think. Boom. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. I've been meaning to do a wings vid for a while. Just something I never got around to. But here I am and hopefully doing it proper. Mm. Oh, how crispy. a couple days early on this this is a more appropriate video for Super Bowl which is coming up this Sunday as we know that's probably the more appropriate day to do a uh, a wing video, but I can't help but feel like on that day, I'll probably be at a party of some sort. I 
And that's not to say that I care about the Super Bowl. Because I really don't. Never have. Football's not my sport at all. I just do. Love me a good party, as you can tell by the tequila that I was slamming. All these honey mustards are so good. Highly suggest you try the recipe I showed you. Super simple. Amazing. Watch. Yeah, just, I, I mean, Super Bowl means nothing to me other than I get invited to a party where there's alcohol and food, which is fun to me. But I just want to let you guys know that I'm not one of these fake ass motherfuckers out here who I hate these people that and I've touched on this in a video in the past this time last year actually I hate fake fans I hate people who come out of the woodwork for one game a year to pretend like they give a shit it's really annoying If you feel that, tell me in the comments. I find it extremely, it's just fake and annoying. And it's also, it's just like, it's just like disrespectful. To those people who actually like follow the sport and who are like at the Super Bowl party like authentically as someone who really really cares about football which is kind of like to those people it's kind of just like disrespectful in my opinion When I show up to a Super Bowl party, I'm like, yo, I don't even know who's playing, but I'm just, I'm here to party with you, and I hope you have a good time when your team wins. Though this year, I think I've heard, I've kept my ear to the street, and I think I've heard that it's the Patriots and the Falcons. And from what I know, the Patriots are like the favorite by far. That being said, I don't have a clue. Hmm. Hard to pick a favorite. Like, a classic Buffalo is just such a classic favorite for a reason. So it is really good. I love it when it's dipped in ranch. So 
I will do that now. Mm. The Asian one, considering all the flavors that went into it, It's the most like, oh, you can taste everything in it, but it, it has like a very one tone flavor at the same, in the same token. And it's definitely like the sweetness of the maple syrup. Shout out Canada one time. I never used to uh, eat wings until I was about 19 years old. So I missed out on these for a long, long time. It was just one of those foods that was never a staple in my family. We just never ate them. So I didn't really know about wings. So my late teens were my friends. We go out for wing night to watch the game. Football, hockey, whatever it is. And that's when I first tried them and I was like, what the fuck have I been doing with my life? It was a savage video. It was like non-stop caveman shit. Well, that was fucking amazing. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I certainly encourage you to try the sauces. Hope you have a good weekend. If you watch the Super Bowl, hope your team wins. Until next time, eat good, live well, stay true. Peace. Black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. What up, world? Welcome to a hoodie style, semi nature, look like I'm supposed to be in nature, crispy wing video. Just chef these up right in the oven here, but we're in the backyard again. It's kind of nature ish. We've got some yard and some neighbors and some lawn and stuff, but we have crispy wings. We stay strapped with many sauces. Uh, nappies, of course. Got some carrots I'm gonna distribute. And uh, a nice cold Dr. P diet, as per usual. How are you guys? Hope you're doing all right. I'm doing great. Uh, I'm just gonna chat with you today, but we're gonna enjoy these wings. I haven't had, I feel like I haven't had wings, especially like my wings, how I do them, nice and crisp, in a good hot minute, in all honesty. 
as we watch this diet doctor delicious amazing fizz put itself well I'm putting it there but you know sacrifice itself to the ice gods for my sipping pleasure on this fine eve it is Sunday it is a Sunday eve I haven't really eaten all day we're just getting to a meal and I look like both a boy scout 12 year old tourist shout out this shirt and the hat what's up check out my dad legs don't know if you can see them but I got some dad legs going on but anyways okay I'm excited and we got to eat I'm starving I'm Marvin listen, listen to these tell me you're not trying to have a bite of those anyways we're gonna pile them up and try out this cluck cluck wing raging ranch in my estimate I think it's gonna taste like a blackened ranch from Popeyes I don't know what it tastes like but that's my oh way too much why has it got to do that to me we got the Nando's Peri Peri Medium probably just be easy on that now because I put way too much of that other sauce so that's gonna dominate and then what's up reach out to me brand reach out to me I want to endorse you Hidden Valley like it's all I want to do with my life I literally all I want to do is endorse Hidden Valley sack of carrots and we got to go in okay crispy crunchy wing you guys know what it's about check it very intrigued to see how this sauce is Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm interested in what you're selling. Okay. Very good. Delicious. Like actually really good. Just trying to figure out it figure it out. It's kind of southwest, like a southwest ranch. But like Popeyes, it does have sort of that blackened. A bit of that black and ranch flavor. I can't lie. It's very good. I would definitely buy it again. Or, and definitely going to keep using it. Mm -hmm. Man. Mmm. I haven't had some crispy my style wings like I said in a while. So as you guys know, I'm out here in my home city on my Northern Ontario tip. Shout out this hat. Went, uh, mmm. Damn, that Nando sauce is good. Went to Winners the other day. And uh, I saw it there and I was like,
I know I'm normally on my ball caps and beanies, but that's my color, first of all. I'm about that green. Second of all, the bugs in the sun out here are times a thousand. I need that protection. And third of all, that shit looks swaggy. Try on. I thought it looked pretty good. A little bit funny. A little bit jokes. Very jokes with this t-shirt. Story behind said t-shirt is that man is that uh, I went to my grandma's today. She's got a place out on the lake near my parents. So go to my grandma's and uh, we're just chatting, hanging out, having a drink. My grandma's like super like cute and cool. She's like 83 or something like that, but she's like very up to date, like very like active and you know she's still going strong where she comes out she's like I got you this t-shirt for going back to Toronto and I was like I don't even know if I am grandma she couldn't have been happier her eyes lit up All she's ever wanted to have is to have her family around. And me and my sisters are her only grandchildren, so. Me and my one sister have lived away. I've lived away for 10 years. My other sister lived away 15. So, Grandma's stoked. Anyway, she gives me this tea. I'm like, Grandma. Actually, we call her Mama. I'm sorry, I have to do that because my nose is running from the heat. We call we don't call her Grandma. We call her Mama because my sister couldn't say the word so she just said mama and that just stuck ever since so I mean, you know, this, I'm like this tea is sick it reminds me of like a, it reminds me of book fair or something or like northern getaway Let's just say true 90s aesthetic, true 90s vibe. And to match it up with the Mosquito Hunter, like. Shout out, shout out the Livestrong bracelet too. That's a whole thing. These wings are a little too on point right now. Come on. I'll get you later. They're just so good. I 
this is pretty much overcast right now. I don't know how much you guys can see, but it's natural light, so it probably should be pretty good. But yeah, my time here has been pretty awesome so far, if I'm honest. Still getting to this YouTube content. Trying a couple different different things. I'm just trying to get a little, a little different, a little weirder, a little creative. I'm trying to adapt to the situation and try to use it to benefit me. But yeah, it's nice to see old friends and get back hanging with like with family and stuff. My stepbrother weirdly got in got into food a lot. Like he was in the navy. He bought a house in Halifax. He had like a rental property in it. Da 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 moved back here got got out of the navy still had his house over there for a while sold it made a bunch of money now he's weirdly into food a lot he wants to open a business so like I basically planned out like a like a menu and a concept and we just been talking and trying to like hash out details and I have a few other people friends and stuff that are interested that have money that kind of want to be involved so It's like potentially opening up like a burger, burger sandwiches and wings and crazy fries type dirty shop. Like we're not that far along, but. The idea is there, there's money there. We just gotta shop around and work out the logistics of it all, but like, it's weird. Universe pushes you in a weird direction and then All of a sudden it's like might end up doing the thing that you guys have always said like you need your own own place where you sell your creations which now might actually end up being a thing and if I do end up doing this I want to YouTube and document the whole thing everything opening a business construction menu testing
everything involved. I personally think it would be insane to have had this channel, this journey, have all you guys saying that over these last like couple years and then have it like come to fruition and document it and have you guys like see the journey of it would be absolutely wild to me but at the same time like so just so cool like so true to myself so true to just what has been said on this channel a long time like for a long time running you so one door closes another opens If I sold these wings, I feel like I'd have no competition. Because <laughs> why are they so good? I don't know. It'd be sick though if I had the Midas touch. actually sold some of my food and it went like crazy and people loved it and got truly successful in the food game with these crisp tips like why do I want to pick and finish these bones Normally I'd end the video there, but that sauce was legitimately, legitimately pretty spicy, and this man needs a carrot cool down. Hopefully this wing vid was pretty satisfying. I know that it's like kind of more far away. But in this scenario, it's just like the table height. I have to like crouch and the camera needs to be that far for me to even be in frame. So it is what it is. Working on getting another setup going. But I think this works pretty good. I love the Outdoor 5 videos, to be honest. Feels awesome to my, just my soul energy. And also, it's just like, natural light is so sick. Alright, that was perfect. So yeah, that's life right now. Things are all good, looking cool. It's all gonna work out for the best. I'm very lucky to have a good family and a, a great support system, and I'm very lucky to have you guys tuning in and watching and just staying loyal to the channel. So um, yeah, just keep on keeping on, keep checking in and viewing, and things are only gonna get better, I promise you, from here. Really gonna do, uh, Try to keep stepping things up here. So, till the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well, stay true. Peace. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Hey, with y'all, back with this installment of trying a crazy ass flavor of wings. You guys know I love wings around here, and uh, 
I've never tried this. I've thought about it for a long time. I've been low key meaning to make these. Um, I just think honestly, so many different flavors of things actually just work on chicken wings. I don't know why that is, but they do. So um, I'm very excited to get into it. Uh, while I was cooking them, I was craving them hard. I'm sure you were too as I was cooking. I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way and we're gonna pour up and then we're gonna smash, okay? So give me two seconds. <laughs> All right, clean and clear and under control. Now, you guys know, before we do anything more, we must stay with me. Pa, 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 pour. <laughs> Got the iceberg on deck. Front and center, attention. <laughs> Dr. P, I just figured the Dr. P and the peanut butter and jam wings just gotta go together, you know what I mean? While we pour up, we of course look to our left and we make mention to all of those of you who have been copping your water bottles through the coldest water through my link, code hoodie. Uh, you use that, you save 10% on your entire order. Get yourself a 21 ouncer, maybe a 64 ouncer if you are a water behemoth. You know, sometimes you just go on a nice hike up a mountain and you need to crush 64 OZs of water. Now, you probably should do that per day, you know what I mean? Also, they have a giveaway, so you just enter your name. You could win some free coldest water bottles, okay? So, all the links are down below, you do that, and uh, I'm a happy camper because your, your engagement with them helps me out. I get kickbacks, and my life is a little bit better every time. So thank you so much. If you've done that, I really, really appreciate that. Dr. P, fizzing like a champion. I do have a napkin off to the side for the boneyard. I am going to keep this video semi soft spoken because I must be mindful of my surroundings, but we must have a <laughs> first step aristocratically. It's just a delight every time. All right, let's get to the business, the main event, what we came for, what I've been actually meaning to try for honestly months. I've been thinking about these and uh, I don't know why it's taking me so long to just do it, but I've done it and we're here with extra crispy wings apparently. Extra crispy. Which is completely okay with me. I love my wings. Crunchy as shit. real true story okay I actually want to try a drum for, and then we will tell you what is happening here in terms of flavor First things first, is it worse? No harm, no foul. I figured it would because obviously there's wings like honey garlic, mango, things like that. And then on the flip side, there's like Thai peanut sauce that they have with chicken and noodles and stuff. So it just makes sense. 
got that nutty, fatty. rich bitch flavor would translate on the wing and of course the sweet element pretty much always goes with chicken Honestly, because I cook these to that really crispy extreme, that crispiness just reminds me of toast. My peanut butter and jam toast. Real talk. You guys all come together. Such a simple recipe too. Literally five ingredients. The wings, oil, salt, jam and peanut butter. I melted out the uh, sauces separately purely for aesthetic so that the thumbnail would pop and shit just so they would look cool But I assume, or what I would do, if I was just making them for myself at home and didn't have to make them dope for YouTube, I just combine the two in a pan. Stir together. Mix them in a bowl. Mix them in a bowl. I'm gonna be done with it. Throw on your favorite YouTuber. Kick back. Have yourself some wings. PB and J, of course. I should also mention that I haven't even eaten in like 25 hours. I'm fully back on my one meal a day. I'm not necessarily going to try to keep it low carb but I am gonna make I'm gonna cook more things now for the channel I'm 
just going to make it a mount that keeps it to like X amount of calories. Still smash food, still really enjoy the food. But kind of let the uh, the cooking be, you know, half the fun. Still eat for you guys, but just not in excess. Now, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> Once a week. I may just fast it out and then go hammer on some fast food or something like that. That's still on the table. You understand. I just can't let quarantine get the best of me. You know? The thing is, is that I was kind of Hold up all winter in in like a crazy winter Canadian city, and I just committed to YouTube full full body. Ate a lot of bad shit, but somewhere along the way. I don't know, I don't want to say like got into like a depression, but I kind of get, get, got into like a, I don't give a fuck attitude. And I started eating kind of just whatever, whenever, like for the channel. But then even if I ate for the channel, like eight, you know, five, six hours later, I'd make something else, order something else, where I used to just be strict on the one meal. Said to myself, because I've done it before, a bunch of my life, when summer rolls around, like spring, April, May, let's get back on my shit fast and go one meal and all that and lose the weight, just a little bit of extra weight for the summer months. But then this all happened. Quarantine. And um, quite honestly, there's like this conundrum of like 
people aren't don't want to say it, but I've already admitted to myself. Summer is basically canceled. I mean, not summer in general. Like you can still enjoy summer, sort of from your own house, or you you, you know you can do some things, but. traditional summer for me at least includes adventures partying having fun times with the uh, members of the opposite sex travel bars, concerts, outings, events, beach, and I just don't see that occurring in the traditional sense this this year, so you're like, do I just eat and not care? <laughs> Say fuck it, I'll see you in, in 2021. And just eat till your heart's content. Tis the predicament. But. advise against that it's not smart to just let it all go even in times like these when you're like screw it the world's going to hell in a handbasket Real quick. What a sludgy fingered video. Did we think it was going to be anything else? PB and J. Is a nasty offender. You ever have a piece of PB and J toast slip off your plate, face down on your couch? It's not fun. Anybody with kids definitely has. I've definitely experienced it. Just myself. Oh my god. What are these fingers about? What a what a war torn adventure. I would have given these maybe five minutes less. I still like them crispy as shit, but just a little more moisture might have been nice. So good though. What is this life that I live? I don't know. It's not bad though. <laughs> it tastes good. Real, real nice. <laughs> mm. 
I can only assume my face is disastrous, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's okay. Ah. A nice little palate cleanse. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode. So until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well. Stay true. Hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah.
All right, y'all. Hello, and welcome to today's video. I'm going to talk with my hands today, and beyond that, we're going to talk about wings today. Battery buffalo wings. Focus in, you fuck. There you go. Battery buffalo wings. So, Schneiders. Now, if you've been on my channel for long enough, you will understand that I am the wing master of life. Yeah, that's right. I'll say it. I am. I'm pretty much a wingmaster. Uh, you've seen this in my channel. You've seen me cook wings, eat wings, and I do both very, very well. Um, now, in today's video, we're going to have wings. And I regret to inform you that uh, I'm not going to cook them myself. And some of you might be like, oh, well, that's bullshit, man. And I, I, hey, I agree. I think it's fucking bullshit, too. I would love to be able to cook my own wings. Now, here is the problem with that, is this. So the problem with that is, is I go to my local grocery store and they have all of the chicken. They have everything else, the breasts, the fucking legs, all the things. Tell me why all of the fresh wings are always sold out. Yeah, I understand it's COVID. I understand we're in a season. I understand it's not the greatest time to get all the dope groceries. But tell me why, out of everything else, chicken wings are the most popular thing, apparently. That, or in COVID, chickens stopped growing wings, and now they just it, they don't exist. I can't get them. So I took my ass to the, to the nearest corner store, mm -hmm, and I got myself some pop. And then I was like, in the fridge, I was like, yo... These look not bad, slash, I'm craving spicy and smooth buttery buffalo wings. So, I said, I hate frozen wings. They're probably going to be bullshit, but might as well try them. We'll give them a try. We'll see what happens. We'll try to make the best of it. That's what we have to do in COVID season. And, you know, have a good old time. So, we're going to see how this works. Because on here, on the picture... It seems like they should be delicious. Now, she seems like an angelic slash demonic woman who's lying to me about how good they could be. Now, you know, she seems to have good energy about the wings, but I don't know if I believe it. So we're, we're going to find out. We are going to find out. Let's find out together. All right, y'all, moment of truth. I've cracked it. And this is where we actually see what's real. So, this, immediately, the sauce and this ranch, all looks fire packed. Amazing. I'm down. Now, this is where it becomes either problematic or not. And you guys all know this about frozen foods. And they all want you to believe on the package it's going to be a good time. And then you open it and you're like, what the fuck is that bull? S that I'm dealing with. Weird that I would say fuck, but not shit. Anyways, it's looking semi bullshit, if I'm honest. I don't even know why they bother putting sauce on the wings in the package when I have that to put on after. So this is literally like redundant and unnecessary. So, anyways, let's throw them in the oven and probably, you know make our way to some disappointment really at this point i would say but we'll see <laughs> dream team dream team is here well maybe not you because you guys don't this is see this is a product that is a dream i this is the thing it's like amazing i love you you can do no wrong to me you on the other hand i have yet to know but i think you might let me down. You might crush my dreams. But, hey, we're going to find out. All right. Another interesting thing about me as a human that you may not know, that you definitely don't know because I've never talked about it on this channel and you don't know me otherwise, is that I never wait for this shit to actually come up to temperature because I don't really have the patience or the care or the time or the give a fucks to give a fuck. So, so what I do then is I just shove her in whenever and then when they're cooked which they will eventually cook uh i pull them out when they look good and that's it all right let's check on these guys uh, 20 minutes they're looking pretty good 
being that they're like store-bought boys that they're probably not gonna be that great I definitely like to cook them a little longer also these fries I tell you what I know you can't have them if you're not Canadian I think they're just Canadian but oh my god they're the best thing ever 20 minutes 20 minutes crispy delicious and then we eating and having a good old time all right y'all these guys Definitely got to be 100% down, I feel like. Mm, maybe not. Does that look done to you? I think it's done. I like my shit real, like, crispy and more kind of, like, dry, in a sense. I can confidently say that before the sauce, this looked kind of dead. And then the sauce gave it life. So, once again, I prove sauce is life. Now y'all know, by nature, I'm a ranch fiend. According to this brand, this is blue cheese. Y'all know I don't even like blue cheese, but for this video, for the detriment of me and the people who love blue cheese, I will have the blue cheese sauce. I will try it, I will do it, and I will love it because from what I know, I can tell that when you have products like this, they always go easy, like it's not like a hard blue cheese. Like I've had some really bad blue cheeses that make me like really feel that type of way. I feel like this is gonna be very like easy blue cheese. So I'm definitely gonna do it for those who want blue cheese because I always get told that like, ranching it with wings has gotta be blue cheese. And everybody's opinion overrides mine, but <laughs> aren't I supposed to be me and supposed to be happy? I don't get it, but oh, okay. All right, so, so these wings, I'm not gonna lie, considering they are like just Schneider standard brand, the way that they cooked and the way that they look with the sauce and everything, almost like they seem fire, not bad. actually so good actually blue cheese so much better than I thought it's also exactly what I did think it's That mild blue cheese. That isn't offensive because it's sold to Gen Pop, Gen Public. That's what Schneider's is. Schneider's is a company that develops Gen Pop and Gen Public products, bologna, sausages, wings. <clears throat> and it's like so big then be approachable be middle road so that said <clears throat> the wings the sauce the everything VV approach VV Middle Road.
very standard, very approachable, very delicious. Okay, now I'm gonna shut the fuck up and eat food. Amazing, unreal. Clean. This is the problem with true buffalo sauce. It's too hot. I don't like it. It's not it's not enjoyable. It's not a fun time. Mmm. Mm -mm. Like it's delicious. I love the vinegar. I love the heat, but then the heat and the vinegar catches up and it's like it's not a good time train. I don't fuck with it. Oh my god. <laughs> this is why I don't do buffalo sauce that often. Life literally hurts. So good, like it's delicious. I love the vinegar, I love the heat, I love the cup, but it's a hard ass thing to deal with. That orange only indicates both deliciousness. but also hard time. In my mouth. That's what's so interesting about hot stuff. It's usually accompanied by like vinegar. And the vinegar aspect is amazing. The flavor aspect. The hot, the pepper, everything is, is amazing. But the actual hot aspect of it hard to deal with. Hard to deal with the actual like tongue heat that comes. from the spice and the sauce and everything, you know? Crazy. All right, I'm getting down to the final. Crispy, amazing fries. Easy peasy, light blue cheese. On the flat, on the wing. These are both of the wing, but the flat. Definitely my favorite part. You know what I mean? That two bone. 
rather than the one. Also delicious, but not really the jam, not the vibe. In terms of the favorite, the good energy. They're both delicious, but some people love the drum, some people love the, the wingette, right? And that's cool. And that's chill. So, delicious, hard on my mouth. I'm dying right now. But, must remain true. Hope you do as well. Hope you enjoyed this one. Until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good. Live well. <sighs> and Stay true. Oh my God, it hurts. Peace.